Okay so before this video starts I just wanna say that this isn't my story. It's a fanfic the link will be in the description which will have other links as well. Also with these videos I don't listen to the videos I upload so if there is anything that is too bad or explicit for YouTube then let me know and please timestamp it. Anyways let's get into the video. Hello? Anime demigod. Here? Naruto quickly healed all the Pokemon around him. Then he went to the first Umbu he could find for instructions. That person was Uzuki Uajeo. Chunin Uzumaki Naruto reporting. What are our orders, asked Naruto. Behind him was Hinata and Suzuki. We have sand and sound invading the village. I want your team to help evacuate civilians. Got it. Naruto produced over a thousand clones and sent them out. He wisely turned most of them into Suzuki and Hinata to avoid misunderstandings. There were still people in the village who would stab him first and ask questions second. Uajeo took one look at the amount of clones and started directing some of them to back up the other Umbu. Naruto caught on to her idea and made as many as he safely could. By the time the invaders made it to the market district, it was bare of civilians. Shifter, Blizzard. Cover their retreat, shouted Naruto. Glacian. Kori, help Shifter, yelled a familiar voice. It was Haku. The air turned to ice in a heartbeat, and the Sunanin were hit rather badly. It was then Naruto noted the odd sack that was on Haku's back. Uh, Haku? What's with the sack? Pai, chirped a voice inside, and the bag opened to reveal a white egg-shaped Pokemon with blue and red triangles. You got it Ajapai, said Naruto in surprise. Haku nodded. It had surprised him at the time too. Naruto laughed as he directed Shifter to cause damage that could easily be repaired. If anyone deserves a sweet Pokemon like Tajapai it's you Haku. I'm sure your new partner will flourish, he said laughing. Haku beamed at him. His new partner had one attack that he loved, which was metronome. Why did he love it? It was unpredictable, much like Naruto and Shifter. Hokage-sama is fighting Orokimaru, yelled one of the other chunin. Naruto cursed. He flared his key, attracting the umbu nearby. Many of them were the same people he had pranked repeatedly. I'm guessing that the old man is behind that barrier in the stadium, he asked. His wasn't the playful Naruto, now he was the serious prankster Naruto. This was a kid who practically knew all the escape routes out of the Umbu headquarters like the back of his hand. Including a few areas people normally didn't think about, like the Chunin exam arena. Naruto had one of his clones direct shifter while he plotted with the Umbu. They were beyond amazed at how thoroughly he knew Kanaha's important areas. Naruto took his pranking hobby very seriously even if it meant creating an opening that wasn't there before. Such as a hole that no one knew about in the same area where the Hokage was. Naruto felt a strange stirring of pride as he led the Umbu to the area where the old man was. His clones were clearing out areas piece by piece, and most of the civilians were out of the village and in the bunkers by now. Very few were going to argue with the last Uchiha. Naruto directed the Umbu with quick efficiency, much as he would his Pokemon team. All he needed to know was their elements and soon a hole began to form in the underside of the barrier. Naruto knew that the area he had created an opening would be weaker, since he had placed seals around it. By the time the opening was cleared, five Umbu rushed in to aid the Hokage before it closed. Above them the outside teams figured out what was going on and assaulted the barrier so that the first team could get through. The Sound 4 were too busy repairing the damage to notice the smaller attacks. Naruto nodded to himself and continued to help with the efforts of the leaf. He noticed that a lot of their forces had gone to the exam and were out like a light, so he used a technique Kurane taught him for mass dispelling of Genjutsu. Kai. He channeled as much chakra into that simple Kai and released it all at once. The effect was immediate, and nearly everyone in the stadium woke up. Including a good portion of the Chunin. Naruto directed his clones like he would shifter to rescue the civilians. The shinobi could figure out who was in charge on their own. Jiraiya spared a glance from the fight with the snake summons to watch his godson. It surprised him how efficiently he directed the clones in the rescue and assistance effort. He grinned and brought out three seal balls. Go. Gama, Fury, and Drifter, yelled Jiraiya. It had been a long time since he used these three for real. Politoed. Blast was. Driftblim. Gama, Politoed. Made a show of looking for angry females, and when he saw the invasion, he gave Jiraiya a look. Toad, Toad, Polly Toad, said Gama. Huh. Shifter, who had been passing by with a Naruto clone in a spion form, snorted in amusement. 
He said, you make us stay in the balls for months at a time, only letting us out to deal with a crowd of angry females, and now you decide to let us fight again. Shifter translated. Hey. It's not my fault no one wants to battle me, protested Jiraiya. Toisy, Blastios. That is still no excuse to leave us in that cramped seal ball for months at a time. Jiraiya looked at his final Pokemon who had turned away from him in irritation. He called on Drifter more than the others, but it had a problem with the fact the man was so damn heavy and only called on him to escape the mobs. Jiraiya sweat dropped. He tried to bribe his Pokemon but they wouldn't have it. They were beyond ticked at him. This wasn't the first case of a Pokemon refusing to answer to their trainer, and no matter how many medals Jiraiya had they had long since lost any respect for him. Finally Jiraiya gave up and sent them back. Naruto had arrived midway during the arguments and shook his head. Serves you right you pervert. No one likes to work for someone they have no respect for, said Naruto. Like you could do better brat. Your team is still young enough to listen to you. This happens a lot with the more powerful and older Pokemon growled Jiraiya. Well yeah, what do you expect? I mean I've seen those teams and the shinobi barely treat them any better than an inanimal. Why should they respect you when you don't give any back? Oh yeah? I'd like to see you do better with these three, said Jiraiya. Is that a challenge, said Naruto evilly. Yes. If you can get these three to work under you, I'll train you in sealing, said Jiraiya glaring. Deal. If you can handle Karama, I'll apologize for calling you Erosunin, said Naruto cackling. Kurama didn't like perverts. He especially hated people who assumed they could order you around without getting to know you first. Jiraiya handed over his seal balls and Naruto called over Kurama. He leaned down to the nine tails and told him of the bet. Kurama glared at Jiraiya. Come on Fox, let's go, said Jiraiya. Naruto snickered as he ran off in another direction with the three seal balls. Come on out, Gama-san. Fury-san, and Drifter-san, said Naruto when he was in another district. The Politoed, Blastios, and Drift-Blim looked at the blonde. He wasn't old enough to order them around and they were still pissed. Hi. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. I made a bet with that stupid pervy sage to prove he was treating you guys wrong. Care to prove me right? Toad, Toad, Politoed. Yeah I know the guy's a total moron, but that doesn't mean all of the trainers in Kanaha are. Besides, if you work with me I'll treat you all to ramen. Toysy, blast was Toysy. Dango for you then. Ankone's gonna love having someone to share her dango with, said Naruto easily. Drif blim, drif. So we have one order of ramen for Gama, one large order of dango for Fury and one order of Jayadon for Drifter. Did I get that right, asked Naruto. He made a point of writing it down so he wouldn't forget. The three Pokemon nodded. Jiraiya never treated them to food except to feed them and even then it was always the packaged stuff for Pokemon. All right. Shall we get to it? asked Naruto. He got a very enthusiastic reply from the three he borrowed from Jiraiya. Fury, Advil, Hydro Pump. Shifter, use Icy Wind to make it hard. Fury seemed to get Naruto's idea, because he shot his Hydro Pump in short but very large bursts that resulted in giant ice bombs being launched that turned to water once they hit something solid. Beside Naruto was a clone, since he didn't like splitting his attention during a battle using Pokemon. Kiseki was tag-teaming with Drifter while Shifter worked with Gama and Fury. Gama-chan, use double slap. Naruto held back a laugh when he saw the look Gama shot him. It was a slip of the tongue, because the Politoed had the same name as his wallet. He then noticed something in the distance. Jiraiya was having a lot of trouble with Kurama. It almost looked like he was fighting two battles, one with the enemy and one with the fox Pokemon. Ow. Damn it you stupid fox. You'll listen to my commands or else. Ow. Quit trying to set me on fire damn it. The umbu nearby who recognized the fox immediately sweat dropped. Even they knew he would never get anywhere like that. The same umbu who ordered Naruto to evacuate the civilians hid a grin behind her mask. After seeing the way the kid treated his team, she had upped her training with her Pokemon and found them to be more obedient afterwards. Thanks to Naruto, over half the umbu, those that didn't see him as the fox and got a good laugh at his pranks, found his methods to be more effective when it came to training Pokemon and their bond grew. A few, who had caught Pokemon that evolved through love had even managed to evolve them. There were now more Espeon, Umbreon, and Tegetic in the squads. Some of the breeders even had some nuchancy after they found some happiny eggs. 
Needless to say the Hokage was pleased when he heard about that. Niko Teiko, what do we do? Keep an eye on Kurama and don't let him get killed. Other than that, leave them alone. I'm not about to interfere in this bet and Jiraiya-sama needs to learn some humility, said Yuijao smugly. The other two Kunoichi in the group nodded in agreement. This was more than enough payback for all the times he tried to break into the secret Kunoichi hot springs. Out of all the males in Kanaha, only Naruto was allowed in, and even then he had to be in hench form and hand over everything but his towel. Naruto had agreed to the terms since he respected them as fellow warriors. The Hokage had been beyond jealous when he heard about that. By the end of the day, quite a few things had happened. 1. Sarutobi Hiruzen was nearly killed by his old student and had lost an arm in the battle. 2. Jiraiya found that he had lost any and all respect from the trainers of the village when they heard about the bet and the fact that his Pokemon worked with Naruto and didn't argue, despite being far above his skill level. 3. The Suna slash sound invasion turned out to be a total bust when they realized Gara was fighting against his own village instead of turning into Shukaku like he was told. In short, everything was chaos for a few days. Oh, and Naruto didn't cry one bit as Gama, Fury, and Drifter nearly ate him out of his savings. The fact Kurama, Shifter, Advil, and Kiseki were helping them didn't count either. Jiraiya was beyond miffed when, after the Hokage heard the terms of the bet and the result, he just laughed at him. Still, he did give Jiraiya clearance to go looking for Tsunade since the pervert had no intention of being Hokage no matter what anyone said. At least he never used his fourth Pokemon. Croaker, Croagunk, had a nasty habit of hitting him with his poison jab whenever he saw him spying. Why he did it, Jiraiya had no idea, but he never got rid of the ball or traded it for a new one. LOL, think of how Brock's Croagunk jabs him every time he hits on girls and you'll get the idea. In an effort to try and bridge the gap he caused with the bet in insulting Naruto's best Pokemon, Jiraiya offered to take the kid with him to find Tsunade. Naruto went with him for one reason. He wanted to ask Tsunade if she could train Haku and Hinata, because those two were the best at medical jutsu and they could only get better if they had a real teacher. Besides, Naruto knew Hinata wanted to be a medic, but thanks to her dumb father she couldn't without getting in trouble. Hayashi couldn't complain if Tsunade of the Senja clan trained his daughter. Naruto was about to open the door when he noticed the glare shifter was giving it. What's up? There is something foul on the other side of the door. Bring out one of Jiraiya's seal balls just in case. Preferably the one that can fly. Naruto edged towards the window and brought out Drifter. Jiraiya had let him hold on to the seal balls for some reason, probably because his own team refused to listen to him anymore and preferred Naruto. Sarutobi had found that rather amusing to be honest. Shifter opened the door, and Naruto only saw the Sherry Nan in all its glory before Drifter took off. Shifter had jumped onto his head before he opened the door. Naruto grinned when he heard the two behind the door curse, well the blue one anyway, and they ran outside to chase him. Too bad he had other plans. Naruto dropped off on a building where it would take them a while to climb or jump up, and quickly switched out his gear. All of his identifying markers went into a seal and shifter went into his seal ball which Naruto very rarely used. Henge. Where Naruto Izumaki had stood before, there was now Nariko Mitarashi, that was his cover name whenever he went into Nariko form undercover. And just to ensure the Uchiha jerk didn't sense him, he placed the strongest chakra draining seal on himself. It wouldn't interfere with the henge, he had checked that once when Anko asked, but it would dim his chakra signature. She cheerfully walked off the building and went looking for Jiraiya. She fully intended to unleash the fury of Croker on him for ditching her. Itaka looked for Naruto and still couldn't locate the distinct Kyuubai chakra. His sherry non passed over a woman with crimson red hair the same shade as Kushina Uzumaki and he dismissed her. She barely had a genin's worth of chakra in her, she was clearly a drop out of the academy. Kisame growled in frustration before he turned to his partner. Now what do we do? We continue to search for him. It shouldn't be that hard, his EV tends to stand out a lot. How so? It can switch between its evolutionary forms and return to being an EV, said Ataka flatly. Brat, what the hell did you come here for, demanded Jiraiya. Suzuki's brother is here with what I'm assuming is a former member of the Seven Swordsmen, said Nariko flatly. What? Itaki Uchiha and his accomplice are here. Why else would I have a chakra drain seal on me you idiot, demanded an irate Nariko. Jiraiya noticed it and was about to remove it when Nariko slapped his hand away. I can only assume they are here for me since I overheard Itaka talk about Shifter. 
Why the hell are you trying to paint a sign as to where I am, he, she demanded. Jiraiya conceded the kid's point. The fact he had been able to fool an Uchiha with his henge was beyond strange. Meet me outside the village while I get my deposit back, we're leaving early. Nariko grumbled. At least she would get to see the festival that would be in full swing the next town over. Jiraiya was surprised when his hand brushed against his student's chest as he went to remove the chakra draining seal. Naruto had put one on that he couldn't remove on his own since it was the best one he had, and discovered that the henge was solid. As in it felt like actual flesh and blood. What the hell? Would you hurry up already you damn pervert? Asked Naruto. Your henge, it's solid. That's not supposed to be possible. My transformation is always solid. Why do you think Anko and Kurane sensei let me join them in the Kunoichi Hot Springs? You know where the secret Kunoichi Hot Springs are and they don't kill you for it? How much wood do you want for pictures, said Jiraiya drooling out of the corner of his mouth. Pervy Sage, you couldn't pay me enough to betray the trust Kurane sensei showed me in letting me come up there with her and Anko. Besides, part of the agreement is to surrender everything but my towel every time I go. Unlike you I respect women. I respect women, protested Jiraiya. No, you don't. If you did then you would notice that all you're doing is humiliating them with your books. Do you think they enjoy reading about Kunoichi who are just hot and kinky? Maybe if your books didn't turn men into perverts they wouldn't chase you as much. Anko had given Naruto one of Jiraiya's books as a joke once, and Naruto had nearly thrown it away. The only reason he hadn't was because it had been a gift. When he mentioned it to Kurane, she had been furious, right up until the point that Naruto said his Pokemon Anatomy books that he borrowed were more interesting, and better written. It was that incident that caused Kurane to invite him and Hinata to the secret Kunoichi Hot Springs. Well, that and Naruto swore on his honor he wouldn't break the contract they made him sign under pain of death or worse. Plus there was the fact he didn't even care when he saw a few of the Yuri girls in the springs going at it. That alone secured him an all-access pass to the springs. Eventually they decided to drop the subject, since neither was willing to budge. Meanwhile Naruto started humming a song he kept hearing whenever he went to sleep. Naruto, where did you hear that? asked Jiraiya suspiciously. Around, why? Because that sounds far too much like the oldest lullaby in the land of whirlpools. Something only the direct line should know. Whenever I fall asleep I hear this weird noise, like singing. What's this tune called anyway? The Song of Lugia, said Jiraiya, supposedly it has the power to calm the sea down and restore Lugia's power whenever nature is upset. Wait, I've heard of that story, where did I? Here it is. Pokemon Legends, Tales of Pokemon Before and After the Cataclysm. Long ago the balance between fire, ice, and lightning was upset and the beast of the sea was awakened. Nature was thrown off balance and the world was at peril until a great trainer came and brought forth the treasures from Fire Island, Lightning Island, and Ice Island. A young maiden played the ancient song which restored the balance and the sea was tamed, read Naruto. Inside was a picture of the trainer. Naruto turned the page and found a music score written. Above was the title, Song of Lugia. Huh. While Jiraiya went to find the nearest brothel, Naruto enjoyed the festival. He found an interesting stand on the way back to the hotel. Wow, cool shells, said Naruto. You have a good eye. These here shells came from the land of whirlpools, said the owner. What's this, asked Naruto, pointing to an odd-shaped shell that almost looked like a musical instrument. No idea. Found that in the shallow waters. If you want it, it's 1000 Ryo. I say 750 said Naruto. Despite popular belief, he did know how to haggle. Soon he had it down to 650, and he paid the man. Once he washed off the mouthpiece, he blew through the spike at the top. It made a strange sound, but didn't really sound like music. Then Naruto turned the round shell and plug a hole with his finger. A soft tone came from the shell. As he experimented, he found that it did make music. It just took practice. His next stop was a bookstore to buy a scroll on music notes. Naruto had his fill of the festival, so he spent a lot of time trying out the shell. By the time Jiraiya got back from the brothel, Naruto had more or less figured out how to recreate the song he kept hearing in his head. Kid, will you quit fiddling with that shell, said Jiraiya tiredly. The missed notes were giving him a headache. Will you quit being a pervert? Naruto countered. Never. Then don't get your hopes up, said Naruto. Finally Naruto hit the last note and grinned. 
Time to test this out. Jiraiya groaned, right up until he realized what song Naruto had been trying to make. If you have it, play the flute song from Pokemon 2000. That's what Naruto is playing right now. Jiraiya was in shock. It almost sounded like a Pokemon singing. Kid, where did you get the idea for that? I thought I would recreate the song I keep hearing, said Naruto cheerfully. Jiraiya chuckled and said something under his breath. It went something along the lines of, trust her son to recreate the song by ear. Naruto spent the rest of the way to the next town looking through the Book of Legends and found another music score called Oration. Jiraiya opted to help the brat in the hopes that he wouldn't kill his hearing with missed notes again. Soon Naruto was playing songs all the way to the next town, occasionally hitting the wrong note and correcting it. He had no idea what would happen by playing those songs. Someone was starting to take notice of him. Arceus, that boy, started a silvery shadow. Yes, he is the one. He shall restore the harmony that has been lost in this world. Much like he did before, spoke another. But are we sure he will realize who he once was? He has been chosen for more than just one fate, said a voice. This speaker had been created not by belief or by fate, but by the meddling of humans. First he must restore the home of his ancestors, said one voice. This voice was icy and sounded like a chirp. Shall we test him once more? Asked one voice. This sounded like flowing waves and the bitter cold wind of the north. We shall place him under the same trials that he had triumphed once before. Perhaps this time the world shall live on. I seems to me that these, shinobi, are faring much better than their predecessors ever did. Many of them can fight like we can. Said a voice like thunder and roaring. That is not exactly a good thing, said another disapprovingly. This voice sounded like magma blasts and a lion's roar. Agreed. Many of them take their partners for granted. Some consider them no more than simple animals, complained the voice from earlier. Yes, but he is different, said the voice of the cold wind. Do you really think one child can change an entire world, asked the oldest. He has to, otherwise it will be all for naught. Naruto was experimenting with something the old Hokage mentioned years ago. He called it a leaf whistle. Jiraiya was cursing the fact that Naruto had figured out how to use music to make his life hell. Because the boy hated mornings less than he did, he found it amusing to use a piercing note to make Jiraiya cry because of his hangover. The only thing that cheered him up was that fact that if he hated the kid now, then Tsunade was liable to kill him. She had hangovers more than he did. What the hell is that racket? demanded a very familiar female voice. A woman with two long blonde pigtails looked outside for the source of the noise. Jiraiya didn't think twice. He pointed at the brat beside him. Sorry lady, just making his life miserable, grinned Naruto. Do that again and I will send my gastrodons after you, she growled. Why would you have more than one, he asked. Come out, she yelled, tossing twin seal balls in the air. Gastrodon, came the twin cries. Naruto could see why she had two. One was blue, green, and dark gray. The other was pink, yellow and gray. I get it now. You have an east and west sea version. You must really like slugs, said Naruto grinning. She's called the slug son in you halfwit, snorted Jiraiya. Naruto paid him no mind, chatting with the two gastrodon. They seemed surprised but crooned in their odd language back. Naruto beamed at the amused Tsunade. I like you lady. You're a hundred times better than this old pervert, said Naruto. Tsunade looked at him oddly. What makes you say that brat? Troa and Gazi say you treat them like your own children, and that they love your cooking. They also say you at least let them out to play which is more than Toad Breath over here does. Who told you their names? They did. Shifter may have translated for me, but they told me, said Naruto. A spion. Tsunade ruffled his hair, and he kept on grinning. Then she noticed something. Wasn't that an espion earlier? V. Finally. Someone who agrees with me. Everyone in the village kept giving me these damn looks like I was the one who was weird, complained Jiraiya. Oi. I told you before, don't make fun of Shifter. Bite. The Eevee's eyes glinted evilly as it launched itself at the Toad Sage, who, sadly, did not get out of the way in time. Yo. Get it off. Get it off, he cried. Tsunade snickered evilly. Nice aim kid. Thanks. He has been warned before, don't mock the EV. And never, ever diss the duck, said Naruto sagely. Come on out guys. Soul. 9. G-O-L. 
Meet Kiseki, Karama, and Ibuprofen, aka Advil. And that's Shifter. Tsunade smiled at him. Clearly this was a shinobi who took the idea of, your team is your family, seriously. Something Jiraiya and Orokimaru never fully understood. Well, since you've met Troa and Gezi, stop laughing dammit. I was 13, snarled Tsunade. Jiraiya was snickering at the their names which were decidedly cute. Naruto kicked him in the leg hard and Shifter was giving the man's leg speculative glances. He wisely shut his trap. Like I was saying, since you've met Troa and Gezi, why don't you mean Joy, Zell, and Dusty? Blissy. Floatzel. Dustix. Trying for a beautifully, asked Naruto knowingly. She nodded. While Naruto got acquainted with Tsunade's team, Shizun was too busy watching him and she only had two herself, Jiraiya told her why they were there. Needless to say she was less than pleased. Fortunately Naruto had the perfect distraction. I bet my shifter can beat your Zell. You're on Brett. I haven't had a decent battle in ages, grinned Tsunade. Shifter, Razor Leaf. Leafian, cried Shifter, changing into his grass form and unleashing a flurry of leaves. Tsunade's jaw appropriately dropped. Zell, use Bubble Beam, said Tsunade. Floatzel. A massive stream of bubbles struck the ground near Shifter, who had dodged with ease. Use Leaf Tackle, said Naruto. Fion. Leaves and vines surrounded Shifter turning his body a darker green as he began to glow. He struck Zell full on, as Tsunade was too surprised to see a move she had never heard of to react. How the hell? I've never even heard of that attack, said Tsunade. Well duh, I came up with it after reading how Volt Tackle worked. I figured if an electric Pokemon can cover its body with electricity and charge with a tackle, then why can't I do the same with the other elements? So far I got Night Tackle, Psy Tackle, Leaf Tackle, Frost Tackle and I'm working on Sand Tackle and Spike Tackle. It's fun coming up with new ways to use old attacks, said Naruto proudly. Tsunade laughed. It had been a very long time since she saw anyone who actually bothered to come up with new ways to attack and not rest on the standards. I like you kid. Too bad I enjoy battling. Zell, use Surf. A wave of water appeared out of nowhere and nearly engulfed Shifter. Shifter, Ice Beam. Glacian. Shifter froze most of the water, but he was still hit. Shifter, use icy wind. Glacian. Shifter spat out a long stream of freezing cold wind. Zell, use bubble beam. Shifter, ice beam. Shifter shot a beam of ice at the bubbles, freezing them instantly. They fell to the ground with a thud. Shifter, use bite. Shifter turned into his Umbreon form. Brian. Floatzel, cried Zell in pain. Tsunade raised an eyebrow. Just how strong is that bite of his, asked Tsunade. No way a simple attack could cause that much damage. Shifter, use bite on this log to demonstrate, said Naruto. Brian. Shifter's bite turned the log into splinters. It was roughly the size of Jiraiya's arm. Shifter's bite strength has been calculated to be as strong as a feraligatrus, said Naruto proudly. Tsunade laughed. She conceded this match to Naruto. Still, it had been a fun battle. That EV of his was too unpredictable for her to compensate for. Kid, would you mind if I examined that EV of yours? That depends on Shifter. He normally only lets Hanane-san give him check UPS, said Naruto. EV. Tsunade bent down for the EV to come to her. Shifter sniffed her hand, and cautiously let her pick him up. She used a medical jutsu to check him over. Well he's definitely one of the best cared for Pokemon I've seen in a while. His coat is glossy and full. His teeth are extremely sharp, and his nails are at an acceptable length. However my skin shows a lot of unusual pathogens in his blood. I already knew that. Hanane chan sent his blood to the lab, and according to them he had been experimented on before I found him. It took him a long time to trust anyone but me. Well his health checks out. And I don't see any issues with him changing between his evolved forms and back. The only issue I have is how many chew toys I've had to buy. His teeth are replaced at least once a month, said Naruto. Have you ever exposed him to an evolutionary stone, she asked. No way. Shifter would be stuck in that form forever. I like him the way he is now. That's why when I found an Everstone I made him a necklace so even if someone tried to force him to evolve he'd stay the same. Well at least you take care of your Pokemon, which is more than I can say for him, said Tsunade, glaring at Jiraiya. She had gotten onto him for months for not treating his Pokemon like his partners. 
Jiraiya was too busy chatting with Shizun to notice the glare. Naruto's eyes lit up when he learned Tsunade had an old book of songs from before the cataclysm in the Senju compound. Naruto didn't realize he loved music so much, but now that he learned how to play from a music score he realized that he liked his new hobby. He couldn't wait to show the old man his new leaf whistle. All they had to do was wait for Tsunade's errand to be finished and they could go home, with a short side trip anyway. Naruto had learned through one of the vendors who sold fish caught off a nearby coast that the land of whirlpools was roughly two days away from where they were. And since Naruto was their resident expert on all things Pokemon, he wanted to see the place where Shinobi originated before their return. Plus he had the weirdest feeling that he needed to go there. Jiraiya agreed to it, so long as Naruto quit sending Shifter after him. Plus this was a good way to introduce the kid to his heritage from his mother. Naruto knew something was wrong when Shifter kept shaking him. What's up? He found Shizun and her partner Grumpig, which she named Sleepy because it hated to get up in the mornings, were out on the floor, clearly poisoned. Naruto immediately went into his bags and found the breeder's field kit for emergency first aid. He had gotten it after passing the qualifier exams as a joke, even though he didn't want to be a breeder or a medic. Sleepy became right as rain within minutes, but the poison in Shizun would take time to work out. Tsunade, she went to meet Orokimaru, said Shizun, the antidote kicking in. Naruto found Jiraiya laid out from another poison, and despite his protests Naruto gave him the broad spectrum antidote from the kit. Just because his chakra control was too sloppy to ever be a medic nin didn't mean he couldn't learn how to heal without it. And he had been nearly beaten to death far too many times before Shifter came along to not want to learn how to heal himself. And Hannah didn't mind teaching him. Kid, how the hell do you have a deluxe breeder's field kit with you, asked Jiraiya, who was feeling his limbs again. Past the qualifier. I'm fully registered and qualified for most Pokemon injuries but I never bothered to take the one to become a full medic. With my control there wasn't any point. But as long as you can pass the qualifier you are legally allowed to buy any version of the breeder's field kits bearing the one that requires a mastery. Shizun stared at him. Are you saying you're a qualified breeder? I can do anything short of surgery. You have to take medic classes in order to learn that, and I couldn't. Besides, I got beaten up way too many times to count to rely on hospitals, which were iffy at best, said Naruto, replacing everything in his kit with precision. The kit he had was an emergency treatment kit that only people with breeder training could get. It was far more expensive than the broad spectrum of healing equipment he had for standard injuries, like full heal and super potions. If Hannah hadn't helped him study so he could get the breeder's kit, he would be stuck with only the minimum needed to help his team. Despite being called the village idiot, Naruto preferred being prepared for the worst. Plus it saved on hospital bills. He pulled out one of his seal balls and sent Kiseki out to find Tsunade. She was one of the fastest on his team, second only to Shifter. Naruto glared at Kabuto. Despite being a fellow trainer, the man barely knew anything about Pokemon. No way was that low score during the ranking exam first round a fluke. And his Keklian was beyond weak. Unlike Naruto, who preferred to train his Pokemon first and gradually get stronger with them, Kabuto clearly didn't train his Pokemon at all. Naruto hated people like that. Naruto leaned down to fiddle with his leg warmers. Brat, I don't think now is the time to adjust your outfit, said Jiraiya. Hold on a second. There. Now I'm ready to rock. Kabuto smiled coldly and went to strike at Naruto. There was only one problem. He wasn't there. Faster than anyone could blink, Naruto was gone. Jiraiya wasn't the only one to blink. What the, was the general consensus. Bushy Brows and Guy aren't the only one who knows the value of weight training to the extremes, said Naruto pleased. Jiraiya's eyebrow twitched. Kid, exactly how much weight did you take off? About the same as an onyx, came Naruto's flippant reply. Tsunade and Shizun gaped. The average onyx weighed 463 pounds. And this kid had that much strain on his body. Why the hell would you have 463 pounds on you, demanded Shizun. It was a bet with Chuji, said Naruto shrugging. The rather rotund boy had bet Naruto that he couldn't lift a snurlax all the way over his head, and if he ever did then he would give him a munchlax from his clan's training grounds. His father had agreed to it mostly because he didn't think it was possible unless you were Tsunade or had opened all the inner gates. Naruto had just found Shifter a week before, so he had agreed to the terms hoping to add to his team. That had been nearly six years ago. 
He had kept adding to his weights whenever Hannah gave him the all clear to do so. Unlike Lee or Guy, he knew when the weights became too much. Which was why twice a week he took them off and just relaxed with his Pokemon. That was more than the green duo ever did. Also the only reason Hannah even let him try such a stupid thing. Kabuto who heard that comment sweat dropped. Now he really didn't want to get hit by the teen. Come on out, Karama, shouted Naruto. Naruto knew one thing from his battles, never bring out your best Pokemon until the end. That way you could come out and surprise your opponent. Besides, it helped to level up the weaker ones. A poor move Naruto-kun, said Kabuto. What Naruto didn't know was that he kept Keklian for appearances sake. His real partner was much more dangerous. Come out, Bayonet, yelled Kabuto. Naruto paled. Bayonet was a ghost type and he didn't do too well with those. It was bad enough he had issues with human ghosts. Karama, Shadow Ball, shouted Naruto. Meanwhile he went after Kabuto. 9. An orb of darkness appeared before Karama, and it hit Bayonet dead on. At least that was what Naruto thought. The marionette Pokemon had thrown up a protect at the last second. Naruto decided to copy Tsunade and struck the ground. It split apart as if hit by an earthquake attack. Very impressive Naruto-kun. Though I do wonder why you spend all your time training your Pokemon instead of yourself. Train the mind before the body, and all will fall before you. I'll wait to learn the super moves once my body is ready to handle that kind of strain. And the more I learn about Pokemon, the better I'll be able to take care of them in emergency situations. Might as well do it while I have the time before the real trouble starts. Naruto turned to Karama, who was still battling the Bayonet. Karama, future sight. 9. Karama's eyes glowed before it stopped. A useless move. It had absolutely no effect, said Kabuto snidely. Naruto didn't stop smirking at him though. Unlike Kabuto, Naruto knew exactly what future sight did. It was a time-delayed move, one that was near impossible to predict when it would hit. There was a reason why Naruto loved psychic types, though he had no idea why he kept catching them. Net. Bayonet cried out in pain which distracted Kabuto long enough for Naruto to land a nasty blow to the temple. What the hell was that, he ground out. Future sight, said Naruto simply. Kabuto had taken a serious hit to the head, so his vision was a bit iffy at the moment. His healing factor, however, was still up and running. So instead of attacking Naruto directly, which he realized would be nearly as suicidal as attacking Tsunade in a straight out Teijutsu fight, he went after Karama instead. 9. Karama cried out in pain as Kabuto used his chakra scapel to sever one of his nine luxurious tails. Karama. By the time Naruto got to his partner, it was clear that the nine tails would bleed out from the wound. He wouldn't be able to stop the bleeding in time. Naruto saw red. This was the only Pokemon he had ever raised from the egg. Karama trusted him completely. Kabuto would be lucky to get away from this fight alive. He had no idea the reaction the Kyuubai had to what Kabuto had done, but at the moment Naruto could care less if the fox ripped the bastard apart. Karama was inside the seal. He knew what it looked like, he had felt the presence of the old one inside Naruto even from the egg. There was an odd quirk to the Kyuubai. He had the ability to sync his chakra with the power of any fox Pokemon bonded to his jailer. It was something Kushina had experimented with when she learned of it, but nothing had ever come out of it. However the one Naruto had raised was different. It shared a name with the Kyuubai and didn't fear him. When Kyuubai saw what Kabuto did to its cousin, it felt rage, a sentiment shared with his jailer. No fox should ever lose a tail like that. For once Kyuubai was ready to work with his idiot jailer. So. He sent a little bit of his chakra to the almost unconscious Nine Tails. Karama looked up and met its eyes with the demon fox. I will make you a deal, little fox. Tell that idiot trainer of yours that I want to make an arrangement with him, and I will help you and restore your lost tail. In exchange you shall become a shiny Nine Tails, and have access to my powers. What's in this for you, old one? No respectable fox should ever lose a tail like that. Especially to a sniveling coward like this shinobi. At least my idiot jailer knows how to treat his team properly. Karama looked at the old fox, and said we have an accord, old one. I will inform Naruto of your desire to work out an arrangement when this is over. Good. Now prepare little fox, because this will be most unpleasant. Perhaps you will fare better than the brat's mother did when she first attempted this. Jiraiya didn't know what happened. One minute Naruto was battling the traitor, 
and doing better than he had ever hoped for, the next, he was about to unleash the Cubabai's chakra on the battlefield. Something he had never tried before, let alone knew how to control. Jiraiya had never had the chance to show the kid how to channel it properly for anything constructive. If he had taken the Chunin exams like he originally thought, maybe he would have had the chance. An explosion of red, violent chakra coated Naruto. What he didn't notice until a few moments later was that a single tail reached out to the downed nine tails. Nine tails, cried Kurama in shock. The foul red chakra was enveloping the downed Pokemon, filling it up with new power and shooting his level up by five. The light orange tips of his eight tails suddenly turned a fire red, and the ends of his fur became like fire. The multifaceted eyes, which were originally a dominant midnight blue, became a violent crimson red with blue streaks. Kurama stood up, and everyone watched in shock as the tail which had been severed so cruelly was regrown. The claws became sharper and more fierce. The Pokemon's height became closer to Naruto's chest. And on the end of each tail was a single crimson flame. A shower of red-colored sparkles appeared before him. Kurama had become a shiny nine tails due to the influence of the nine-tailed fox demon. Not that Naruto cared how rare his Pokemon had become. He was just glad Kurama was alright again. By the time Naruto and Kurama were done with Kabuto you would have to pick up the pieces with tweezers. Naruto did not take an attack that nearly killed one of his team very well, and this was one time that the Kyuubai could agree on. Needless to say Jiraiya was looking a little queasy from the fact that Naruto had let the Kyuubai out long enough to tear Kabuto limb from limb. Not because of the blood but because the key the Kyuubai let off is pretty damn foul. I'm skipping to the next scene because you can probably guess what happened next. Orakai got his ass kicked soundly and ran with his tail between his legs thanks to Jiraiya and Tsunade tag teaming against him. Tsunade examined Kurama with a professional eye. By all accounts he had suddenly gone up five levels and became a shiny Pokemon, who were supposedly blessed by the gods themselves, though there was never confirmation of this, simply by coming into direct contact with unfiltered Baijuyo Chakra from the world's largest nine-tailed fox. In fact for some odd reason there appeared to be no adverse side effects barring the large amount of pain he felt regrowing his cut-off tail. Naruto was currently sleeping off the excess chakra, and unknown to the two Sunin and Medicnin working out a deal with the cranky fox that would benefit both parties, so they had to wait until he was able to move on his own before they made that short side trip to Whirlpool. They were mostly agreeing to the destination because a, it was part of his heritage and he wanted to see it at least once and b, according to their resident expert on all things before the cataclysm, when tested about whether or not he actually read the books he bought Iroko learned Naruto actually knew more about pre-shinobi era than most of the teachers at the academy who barely dipped into the subject, which made him the premier expert in the Leaf Village. Even the old Hokage hadn't bothered to learn about life before the cataclysm, it was the birthplace of seal balls. Even Jiraiya wanted to see that. Besides, one never knew what you could find by raiding an old village. Inside the seal. All right Fox, Kurama said you wanted to make an arrangement we can both agree to, so here I am. Since you did save his life, I am willing to hear any requests you want to make, said Naruto. The Kyuubai blinked. At least the kid was willing to hear him out. First off, could you change the damn scenery around here? Sewers are not that fun to be stuck in, complained Kyuubai. Uh, how do I change the scenery? Easily. Think of an area you feel most comfortable in and it will change. Naruto blinked and actually thought about it. He didn't know why his mind looked like a sewer by default, but it wasn't very interesting. So instead he turned his mind into Kanaha. All his knowledge was pooled into the bookstore he frequented, since he wasn't known as a very good student they never had reason to ban him, and it was run by people who had never lost anyone to the fox, so they didn't have a grudge against him, his jutsu repertoire, which was larger than one would expect, became the academy, and Ichiraku held all his most precious memories like when Shifter first started to truly trust him. The Kyuubai, to his disbelief, was stuck on top of the Hokage Mountain in a golden cage that didn't really fit him at all. What the heck? Why are you still in a cage? Because the one in charge of it refuses to let me walk around, growled Kyuubai. Naruto put his hands on the bar closest to him. He could feel the warmth of the gold, as if it were alive. Could you possibly become a collar or something? Despite being a grouch he can't be all that bad, asked Naruto. He could feel the bars warm under his hands, as if thinking. Then, they melted like water and became chains. The chains wrapped themselves around Kyuubai like a collar and around each limb. 
The fox shifted, as if testing his newfound freedom. Impressive. It seems that you at least can be reasoned with, unlike your mother. You saved Karama. I figure that at least earns you the benefit of a doubt in my book. Like I would allow one of the foxes who share my spirit be killed by a wretch like that snake. I have been watching you, little shinobi, and from what I've seen your dedication to your pack is admirable. You hate reading, yet you adapted it into a hobby in order to protect what is yours. You had no qualms about killing one who tried to harm your pack. Anyone who hurts my team like that deserves it, said Naruto. Sure it had made him a little queasy later, but he got over it simply by remembering the fact Kabuto had attempted to kill Karama. Agreed. Anyone who harms the pack deserves to pay the price. Now, on to another arrangement. I am willing to work with you in supply chakra and control, though you would have to actually work at it, in exchange for a little freedom on the outside. Would letting you loose in a shadow clone work? I mean those things are pretty much pure chakra and I generally spam them anyway, so no one would be able to know you hijacked one while I train. So long as you don't make it obvious that you're not a regular clone I have no objections. Definitely more reasonable than your mother. So, do we have an agreement? You supply chakra and help with my control, I let you run around in a clone so long as you don't get busted for it. Though I would like to know what happened to Karama. That? That was something your mother experimented with after she caught a Vulpix, but never successfully completed. Because the Nine Tails is the closest to my own summon set, I can temporarily give them a power boost. However, because Karama was raised by you from the egg after your coils were opened up to the fullest extent you can manage and was trained in close proximity, his boost became permanent. The fact he became a shiny is just a way of marking that fact. It means that he can filter my chakra for you and negate most of the negative side effects, but he won't get another leveling boost like the initial change. He's actually able to handle the strain better than your mother's nine tails partner. I get it. He was already influenced by your chakra from the egg when I first picked him, so the backlash wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. The amount of pain he was in was just for the initial change. Exactly. While he can handle the effects, Battling with him for at least three days is something I wouldn't recommend. Good to know. So, are we settled then? Yes. And with that, Naruto woke up. When Tsunade learned Naruto was a registered breeder, she was the only one who didn't show any surprise. Your team is in perfect shape, and the only people who manage that are breeders. Though it is rare to find those who don't bother with chakra. My control is so shitty it's not worth mentioning. However I learned as much as I could from Hanane so my practical knowledge makes up for it. I can do anything bearing surgery, and that's mostly cause the medic nins didn't want me anywhere near them to teach me. Hannah gave me the deluxe field kit as a present for actually becoming a registered breeder. A slash n, in other words, Naruto is basically on the same level as a really good nurse, but not really qualified to do any in-depth work like Sakura does in Shippuden. He's good enough to heal competently but he won't suddenly whip up antidotes or do surgery on the spot. He doesn't have the training for it. Tsunade decided to quiz him on what he could do and was impressed. For someone who hated studying, the knucklehead got almost everything perfectly. It seems there is still hope for the village yet. I never would have expected an idiot like you to actually get those right, she admitted. It's mostly because I bring odd books into Iricus history class that he never called me on. As long as it wasn't fiction, he didn't care if I ignored those lessons. Anyone else you can think of that you would like to recommend, asked Tsunade amused. Hinata and Haku, he said immediately. Who? Hinata Hayaga and Haku Mamakai. Both of them are better than I am at healing, but I'm sure they could do even better if they had a really good teacher. Plus if it was the new Hokage teaching them, Hayashi wouldn't complain about Hinata becoming a medic, said Naruto. So basically you want me to one-up the Hayaga clan elders, asked Tsunade. Yup. Now that I can agree with. But in the meantime, I'll be refining your technique and testing you to see exactly how bad your control is. Kyuabai agreed to help me with that since I let him run around with only a collar, said Naruto. Jiraiya paused then and there. He had been ignoring the fact that the brat liked Tsunade and had more in common with her for the past hour or so, but hearing the fact that the Kyuabai was willing to work with him was news he couldn't ignore. You spoke to the Kyuabai. Yeah. He said I'm more reasonable than my mom, since I'm willing to give him a chance. He's the one who saved Karama after all, so I figured that hearing him out wouldn't hurt. And, said Jiraiya. 
No way was he letting that damn fox loose after he inadvertently killed Minato and Kushina. Naruto smirked. It was probably a better idea for Jiraiya to find out firsthand, plus he had a feeling Kyuubai needed to let off some steam. The fox rumbled in agreement in his mind. Shadow clone. With a poof, there was a red-eyed Naruto standing next to him stretching. Finally, some fresh air. Even with the remodeling you did it still reeks like a sewer. Maybe now that head of yours will air out, complained Kyuubai. He took one look at Jiraiya and snorted. Kid, why did you give the fox free reign? demanded Jiraiya. Because he earned a little leeway when he saved Kurama, said Naruto flatly. The kid is more reasonable than his mother. And don't look at me like that you virgin toad. I didn't attack Kanaha out of choice, I was forced. You think I would stick around a village where the leader had the ability to seal me in again the minute I left his wife, said Kyuubai irritably. Jiraiya's mouth open and shut repeatedly. He wasn't expecting that answer. Tsunade instead asked a more important questions and did a little poking to see exactly how this hijacked clone worked. Kyuubai put up with it because he knew full well that if he didn't she wouldn't let him roam around the village scaring the locals for fun. And when she heard from Naruto exactly how bad it had been until Shifter convinced them otherwise, well, she wasn't about to curtail his small amount of freedom just to pacify the civilians. At least he agreed to only deal psychological damage and no physical. Still, he did object to Jiraiya trying to fix the seal so he wouldn't be allowed out. The fact Naruto complained against it loudly only gave him more reason not to eat the annoying brat. Naruto was getting water when he found the oddest looking Pokemon in his short life. It was a beautiful blue color, and it had the shape of diamonds along its body. The mane was a deep purple color, and it had a white underbelly. Its tail was like twin ribbons that flowed to the front, and it had an odd symbol on its forehead. The eyes were a deep violet color. Naruto stared, unable to believe his eyes. Suakun. He whispered in shock. Where most of his class would attempt to capture it, Naruto instead looked at it in wonder. The Aurora Pokemon met his eyes for who knows how long before lightly touching him with its right paw and bounding off. Kid, I think you were just blessed by the spirit of the North Wind. You sure Kyuubai? The legendary quit appearing to Shinobi ever since they brought back the Pokemon after the Cataclysm. For one to appear at all is a sign. Fortunately Suakun is one who happens to like humans, so it's probably a good one. In any event, keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for the heads up Kyuubai. Your mindscape finally aired out. And you've been letting me out more than any of the others have. Let's just say you've earned a few brownie points with me and leave it at that. So what do you think this means? We'll find out eventually. Arceus wouldn't have allowed a blessing to occur without reason. Naruto was disappointed when he finally saw Whirlpool. Jiraiya had said it had been destroyed, but he hadn't thought it would be this bad. There wasn't a single building left standing. As they all split up to explore the ruins, each taking a different corner, Naruto felt himself being pulled by a force he didn't recognize. The only reason he followed it was because Kyuubai said it wasn't evil, in fact it felt like Suakun had, so it was possible that the legendary Pokemon were guiding him. Placing his faith in something he couldn't see, Naruto followed the tug all the way to a warehouse that was nearly collapsed. It was clear someone had attempted to raid it many times, but the bloodstains indicated no one had succeeded. Looking inside, Naruto saw what they had attempted to steal. It was an egg, deep black and crimson red in color. Naruto cautiously put a foot inside, ready to jump back in a heartbeat. He felt a seal activate in a kunau lodge itself in his foot. There was a deep hum that he felt in his bones, and the seal turned off. What, the hell? Blood seal. Clearly an Uzumaki activated it and it stayed active until one of the blood came here. Naruto stepped into the building, his foot already healed thanks to the fox. It hadn't been poisoned after all. He picked up the egg and felt it warm up in his hands. What sort of Pokemon egg is this? Only one I know of that the Uzumaki had been researching was Zoro. Mostly because they nearly went extinct. Ironically enough, Zoro is a part of my summons set, though actually getting one is damn near impossible. Huh, the tug is gone. I guess they wanted me to find this egg. Probably want you to raise it. I'll even help you name it later. Naruto proceeded to search the ruins with Kyuubai's help, as he remembered odd places that the Uzumaki generally placed seals on. End result? Naruto had a lot of new toys and books to read. Meanwhile, he was humming the Song of Lugia while he looked around. When night fell, 
They set up camp in what was once the cave where Lugia was said to sleep. In the spirit of where they were, Tsunade convinced Naruto to take out the odd flute shell of his and play the song. Play flute song from Pokemon 2000 here. Right as Naruto hit the last note, they could all feel something waking up. Suddenly the air filled with a song that sounded almost exactly like Naruto's flute. Naruto was the first to rush out of the cave, and what he saw had his staring in awe. A great silver and blue dragon with giant wings and spiked tail. Its belly was a deep blue, and it was a bright pure silver color. It almost looked like a Lapras, only instead of ears, it had this bluish mask around the eyes. Its cry almost sounded like a whale singing. The song. The song has recalled me. But it alone cannot restore the balance that has been lost. The cataclysm was a lesson, but many more must be learned before the world is fully healed. You know what caused the earthquakes, said Naruto. The legendary Pokemon looked at him. Before the cataclysm, there was an organization which nearly took over the human world. Many tried to stop it, but in the end the world was nearly destroyed by the leader's greed. He willfully corrupted Pokemon, and even created one for power. So, in order to accomplish what the humans could not, Arceus charged those of great power to shake the world and remove all of the Pokemon. It forced the humans to adapt, and as a result the organization was destroyed completely. What happened to the Pokemon that was created, asked Naruto in concern. Jiraiya, Shizun, and Tsunade watched on in shock from inside the cave. Mewtwo was granted legendary status by Arceus, but he does not love the humans for creating him. Finally Jiraiya spoke. Where did the tailed beasts come from, he asked. The Pokemon looked at him. Those you call the Baijuya were humanity's attempts to recreate Pokemon. However the Jubi was too powerful, so one man rose up and split ten into nine. The Kyuubi, for example, was based roughly off of a genetic offspring of Nine Tails and Zoroark. Because they could not be controlled, the humans then selected people to act as containers, which you call Jinchuriki. We only brought back the Pokemon because of a single Pikachu, who pleaded on behalf of all those who trained and lived side by side with the humans. It looked at Naruto directly. The egg you found in the warehouse is a test. Succeed, and you will find out more about who you are. Fail, and the world will fall. How will I know when the test is over? Celebi will tell you. Train hard, and do not stop. We are always watching. The Pokemon sang again, this time it sounded exactly like the song Naruto had taken to humming whenever bored. Naruto's eyes widened as he realized who this Pokemon was. Lugia. Two legendaries in two days, this couldn't be a coincidence. Kid, what the hell have you dragged us into this time, said Jiraiya when it was over. I have absolutely no frickin' idea. At least we won't be bored. Tsunade's return was met with fanfare, well as much fanfare as a shinobi village still trying to restore their village could make. Naturally Tsunade went to see the old man. He had barely survived his encounter with Orokimaru. A week after Tsunade was declared the new Hokage, she called in four people to her office. Naruto, Hinata, Haku, and surprisingly enough Sakura Harano were called in. All right. I'm sure you are wondering why I called you in here. Remember the test that the shinobi forces were given three days ago that was administered by the breeders. Naruto had an idea of where this was going, but wisely kept his mouth shut. Hinata nodded. It had been very odd. That was actually a test to see who had the potential to become medics. You four scored the highest in the quiz. As one, everyone turned to look at Naruto in shock. Sakura in particular. How the hell did Naruto of all people pass an exam on medical techniques? I have a lot of hobbies Harano. And for your information I happen to be a level 3 registered breeder. The only reason no one knows about it is because no one ever asked, and I took the exam as a joke. I never expected to actually pass with the second highest score next to BAHN here, said Naruto flatly. Sakura rubbed her head, feeling a massive headache coming her way. It did not help that Anko had tossed her several medical books and told her flatly she wasn't allowed to even think of Suzuki Uchiha after the piss poor showing at the ranking exam until she could repeat the books word for word while being attacked by poisonous snakes. Sakura officially hated snakes as much as she did Tora. At least Kiba and Shino got a break in training, as Anko put them through elemental affinities before booting them to two different teachers while she worked with Sakura. Shino was still quietly cursing out Might Guy and Rock Lee. Kiba was just pissed that Anko had gotten Hana to teach him how to heal Akamaru and Growler as well as improve their combo attacks. So after she took the test, 
she looked at the top scorer and learned it was Tsunade. She never noticed the name on the bottom, thinking it had been a typo at the time. In any case, since you four are the best of the current crop of Genin and Shunin as medics, I want to offer you the chance to learn from me and Shizun. Something tells me things are going to get worse very soon, and we'll need all the help we can get. An experienced healer is a commodity that is always in short supply during war times, said Tsunade. I'm in. You'll probably teach me more than the damn pervert, and this is something I know I can do without people trying to screw me over, said Naruto. Count me in, said Hinata quietly. She always wanted to be a medic, and her family couldn't complain if the new Hokage was teaching her. And the woman was from a clan more famous than the Hayaga. I'm in as well. While the medics in the hospital are good, they are not your level. And I've always had a passion for the healing arts, said Haku. Just one question. If I agree to this do I still have to train with Anko, asked Sakura. No. You'll be under my command except for missions, said Tsunade. No more snake bitch. Where do I sign, said Sakura. Tsunade looked at all of them and saw their resolve. Naruto she knew was a good medic, he just needed help. And he wouldn't recommend anyone he didn't trust. In that case, meet me at training ground 54 in two days at 8. That would give her time to warm up. Naruto looked at Sakura before he left and chuckled darkly. Oh Harano, you have no idea what hell you've just signed yourself up for. Maybe now you'll actually act like a kunoichi instead of cannon fodder, he said with a smirk. Hinata and Haku coughed suspiciously. Naruto's egg hatched a month after Tsunade was elected Hokage. He had kept it with him in a special sack the entire time, and he wasn't the only one carrying a new egg. All three of those chosen by Tsunade to learn healing had a new egg, courtesy of the breeders. Sakura's was, of course, bright pink. Hinata had a light red, white and lime green egg. Haku had a blue, red, and light yellow egg. After Naruto, each of their eggs hatched one after the other. Sakura had an Iglibyuf, Hinata a Ralts, and Haku, much to the amusement of Zabuza, had a Toto Dill. The only reason Haku hadn't trained the crocodile to attack Zabuza's porn yet was because he was training Hitomi's Ice Fang attack. Well that and Naruto had Shifter train Hitomi in her bite attack with Jiraiya as the target. Tsunade was too busy laughing her ass off because the pervert got bit while spying on the girl's half of the bathhouse. Well, that and Naruto recommended a store that sold the toys he got Shifter and they gave Haku a discount on bulk buys. Hitomi would soon have a jaw strength to be feared, by the time she hit her finally evolutionary stage. Needless to say Hitomi got along with the excitable Naruto. Everyone was staring at little Nara though. It was rare to see an actual Zoro, who, much to Naruto's amusement, took to his sexy jutsu like a duck to water, and for one to train with them. Haku would have brought his to Japaikiri chan who for some reason seemed to like using the mist attack and spent far too much time around Zabuza, but Tsunade told him that all new medics got a new egg, who would become their personal partner when it came to learning medical jutsu and techniques. Hers had been Zell. And Naruto had the choice of either using the Zoro egg or the Dradini egg Enko had set aside for him. All he had to do was claim it. Their first exercise was teamwork, which involved two of them, usually Haku and Sakura or Hinata and Naruto, calling out attacks before Tsunade hit them with small boulders. Needless to say they learned to dodge really, really quickly. It was only after she got their physical condition up to her standards that she trained them in chakra control. Naruto needed the most help, but with the Kyuubai not fighting him and even controlling the output to a point, it was better than it could have been. Because of his massive reserves, Naruto had trouble controlling it. Finally Tsunade had a breakthrough, and taught him how to do the same healing tricks she was teaching the others, without chakra at all. Instead he worked with his Pokemon, and he started to develop his own methods. Shifter in his Espeon form was particularly good at this. It quickly became clear that out of the four, Naruto had the most practical experience, outdoing even Haku who had been trained by Zabuza. Then again, he had to learn the hard way thanks to the mobs that had finally stopped. Plus he had to learn how to heal Shifter when people kicked him too hard. So Tsunade had Naruto teach the girls the basics, while she worked with Haku and his Senbon. She often left him with Shizun while the girls worked on their animals and she worked with Naruto with his chakra control and basic healing skills. By the time they were finally cleared to go on another mission, Naruto had started to carry a bag along with his usual travel gear. There was quite a bit of staring from his friends when they realized he had a breeder's badge on his collar when he was quite clear that he wanted to stay a trainer. 
Because he had been promoted to Chunin, Naruto was the secondary leader of the group. Much to his displeasure, Kakashi was the primary because he had been there before and had a basic idea of what would happen. Uzumaki, before you head to the meeting point, I have something you've been waiting for, said Tsunade. Naruto paused before he left the room. She tossed him an old book that had been cared for. Naruto could just barely translate the title. Practice before you come back and we'll have a small concert for your friends. And I'll have some of the other teams clean up your new house and move your things in. Naruto had, when he returned from the mission, gone to the old Hokage and asked for help in finding a new place to live since his apartment was getting very crowded. Sarutobi had decided to give Naruto part of his inheritance early, since he had managed to become Chunin. So now Naruto was moving into his parents' house before the attack, which had been left under Sarutobi's care until he was old enough or Chunin. It had a large yard and was close to the Inuzuka compound. It also had a large stream going through it into a medium-sized pond. Advil had jumped into that pond and stayed there. So Naruto was leaving him behind for this mission. Kiseki would be guarding the house from people who weren't allowed in, so the only Pokemon he would have on him were Shifter, Neru, Kurama, and Croker, since Jiraiya wanted some peace while Naruto was gone. Once Naruto was old enough he was handing over his Pokeballs to the boy and leaving them with him. He would start fresh, since none of his team trusted him as a partner anymore. There was also the egg that Chuji's father gave Naruto since he had gone into the compound after coming back and finally won the bet he made with Chuji years ago. Once it hatched he would have a munchlax on his team, which he planned to name Tuki or Ayam depending on the gender. He just couldn't wait to see Kakashi's reaction to Haku's hatred of Ika Ika. Haku had gotten really good at stealing porn from under his master's nose, to the fury of Zabuza. Kakashi's books wouldn't last with him around. Well, that and Suzuki had taught them all the grand fireball technique since he hated perverts as much as Naruto did. If Kakashi tried to read it around them, his books were toast. Their mission? Escort a group to the land of snow. Their client? The famous princess from the most popular movie series in the elemental countries. Naruto couldn't help but feel things would go to hell from the start, so he convinced Haku to pack extra supplies, using the sealing knowledge Jiraiya showed him, after the man bitched for three hours about the fact that Naruto liked Tsunade more than he did the great Toad Sage, to store even more medical supplies into certain spots. Haku was watching with something akin to awe as Naruto proceeded to annoy the entire front row by landing sticky candy down their shirt collars. It wasn't until the end of the movie that someone finally looked up and spotted the kid with the candy, and put two and two together. They had to hightail it out of there pretty quick after that. Thank Kami for shadow clones. Naruto was playing his leaf whistle all the way to the boat as Kakashi carried the actress. She had put up a fight, but Shifter hadn't been happy with the mace she shot into Naruto's eyes, so he used hypnosis on her immediately after. Kakashi was curious as to how Naruto was so good at the leaf whistle. Then he thought back to Naruto's mother, and figured he got it from her. Kushina had a weird musical ability that allowed her to become passable at any musical instrument she got her hands on, and it would only get better with practice. Suddenly Naruto paused, as if he heard something, before playing a song Kakashi had never heard before. It was wild, fierce, and playful. What's that? Naruto paused and signed back using Umbu Code, one of the books he had gotten from Anko Ninetales Blitz. Fox made request. Now that he was paying attention, it did bring to mind the sight of Kurama playing around with Yum and Shifter. Must be a Fox thing. So you talk to it now, said Kakashi. Him. And if you have questions just ask him directly. I made a deal with him so he could walk around so long as the fallout doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. In exchange he helps me with my control and powers me up when I need it. Plus my memory's a lot better now, and I find reading doesn't give me migraines anymore. You let him out. Naruto made a single clone, and the clone yawned. Relax Scarecrow. As long as I'm allowed to wander around, I won't cause problems. Just don't aim that damn thief eye at me, and I won't rip your head off. By the way Kit, the note was E-flat, not B-flat. Sorry. Want me to try again? You won't improve without help, and luckily for you I remember most of what your mother used to sing before that night. We can practice between your medic training with Haku. Your control should be good enough for a scalpel that won't kill your patients. Kakashi stared, as he compared the two. Where Naruto had sapphire blue eyes, Kyuabai had crimson red. His hair was spikier than normal and he was about an inch or two taller. 
his whisker marks were deepened, and you could feel the undercurrent of power in Kyuubai's clone. Well that and the Kyuubai clone was reading one of Naruto's pre-cataclysm books while walking and not crashing into anything, which even Naruto had trouble doing. At least Naruto had finally gotten an answer for why the earthquakes that devastated the world had even happened. He had solved one of the greatest mysteries in the shinobi world. He was still raking in the cash from publishing that one, though he had Hinata and Suzuki proofread for him. They had better handwriting and much better grammar than he did. A slash n, grammar Nazis can bite me. Be glad I know how to spell. The end result was that Naruto was easily more rich than Jiraiya at this point, since he had read so many of the books on the world before the cataclysm that he was considered the leading expert in Kanaha. Iruka had already brought him in during the three-month period he was training with Tsunade to act as the history teacher for that subject, and the grades had shot up. He had impressed more than one person after that. So has Ino gotten over her gossip queen mode yet or do we have to wait until the shock wears off? asked Naruto. Shikamaru had begged Naruto to take Ino with them so he could get some peace, and it had only taken Naruto a full minute to come up with the best excuse to bring her, in exchange for Shikamaru and Chuji taking care of his garden for him. Being around Ino so much they must have picked up something. Ino could find and get rare plants from snow that they could cultivate at home, with Naruto supplying the greenhouse since Shifter could keep it cold and because Naruto had experience raising difficult plants. He had trouble keeping the mixtures in medicine straight, but Tsunade had cleared him to help in turning at the hospital so long as he wasn't required to use chakra-based techniques. The fact his shadow clones could cover more than one patient was actually a blessing more than a curse, and since they had the chakra of a Jounin with Chunin level control, they could use minor chakra-based techniques while the original couldn't. Needless to say those who knew his parents were surprised that he went the medic route as a hobby. He was still the heavy hitter type in a battle but at least any team he was on had the benefit of an experienced field medic as a bonus. Plus his seals were top notch, so he always had plenty of supplies, even if it was a bitch to budget for the ones he used a lot. All in all, the four-man team was ready for nearly anything, not including the Pokemon they had on them. Though Kakashi was asking Naruto for some advice on Minato, his Jolteon, since the spiked dog was nearly impossible to work with when pissed. And it got pissed real easy when around Shifter. So Naruto let Kakashi borrow Shifter while he worked with Minato. The Jolteon was less than pleased to see him, after the beating he got from Shifter. Hinata was in a bit of a bind. While her Ryalu had evolved into Lucario, and had taken to the gentle fist fighting style like a Kirin into water, her father had been spending more time with her cousin Niji and her sister. Normally this would be a good thing, except the Hyuga elders weren't very pleased she had taken up medic training since they viewed the practice as beneath them despite the fact it was Tsunade herself who was training her. Fortunately for her, and unfortunately for the elders, Hinata had mastered the super strength attack of that Tsunade was famous for. The end result was that quite a few of those who wanted to slap a caged bird seal on her for being weak were in intensive care after the ass kicking she gave them. Tsunade wasn't the only one laughing at the way they shit themselves because Hinata tended to be their nurse, or the gleam the girl had in her eye while tending to them. Naruto cocked his head when he heard the scream. Little Miss Pris finally woke up, he said. Haku, Ino, and Kakashi heard the actress screaming in rage. Ino couldn't believe what a bitch Koyuki was. Still, she did get a ton of autographs. So she was happy. Land ho, cried one of the new lookouts. When they got closer, it quickly became apparent that the land wasn't land at all, but a Pokemon that was in extreme pain. It was massive, easily big enough to mistake as land. And from what Naruto could tell, it had run afoul of something with a lot of sharp teeth, possibly a shark. Naruto immediately had Haku create a small island of ice with Kori, Shifter, and his bloodline so he could have a place to work on the injured Pokemon. It sounded like it was in great pain. He didn't pay any mind to the ship which had stopped the second he had jumped off and water walked to the new platform created by the three. His hands flew through the signs for the mystic palm technique and he gently touched the wound. It wasn't big, but it was definitely infected at least. Something had taken a deep enough chunk out of it that it got past the blubber. Neru, I need 10 cc's of water type antibiotics, stat. The Zoro jumped and turned into Naruto's female form, primarily for pranks, but for some reason it was easier than turning into Naruto as himself, with a whirl as she looked into his bag for the medicine. This was part of her training, locating and handing the correct medicine on command. It had taken a lot of effort from Tsunade and Shifter, but eventually she got it right. 
Naruto drew the required amount, and plunged it into the skin. The needle was just long enough to get through the buoyant fat layer, which was dangerously thin because of the infection. Once that was done, he went to work cleaning the wound manually and applying an anesthetic while he put on a waterproof bandage that would fall off naturally when the wound healed up. It was packed into the gouged out part so that when it healed up, the packing would fall off and be eaten by other Pokemon. Naruto prided himself on all natural healing remedies that didn't hurt wild Pokemon when they fell off. Five hours later, he got up and gently patted the female Pokemon. He didn't know what type it was, but he could tell it was a deep sea denizen, and that it was clearly a whale of sorts. The platform should disappear in an hour. Eat a lot and stay away from the predators, and you should be good as new, said Naruto. Shifter translated to ensure the Pokemon understood. The whale sang in thanks, and Naruto walked back to the ship. He had been completely unaware of the fact that the director had filmed him saving the Pokemon. Ino was stunned. Wow ramen breath, I didn't know you were so good at healing without chakra. Of course I am. You think I'd let those jerks at the hospital treat him when they kick me out even with a broken bone? Hanane taught me a lot, and I took the breeder exam years ago, snorted Naruto. Suddenly he looked up. Huh, hop up season again? he said. What, said Ino. Naruto pointed up. Sure enough, an entire group of Hopip, Skiploom, and Jumpluff were floating above the ship. Ino withheld her squeal of delight, because she had always wanted to catch one. She vaguely noticed the sound of a leaf whistle, and suddenly a few drifted down. She turned to find Naruto playing a catchy tune that reminded her of a breeze in spring. One of the Hopip even landed on Naruto's head. A few seemed content to rest on the boat while the others drifted around it. If you want to have one on your team, you can use now to convince one to join you, said Naruto pleasantly. Ino beamed at him. Perhaps Naruto wasn't as bad as the women who frequented her family's flower shop claimed. By the time they ran into the mystery glacier, which Naruto could tell in a heartbeat wasn't natural in the least, due to lack of ice types running around, Ino and her new hopip, which seemed to favor resting on her head for some reason, were yawning after coming off guard duty that night. Naruto sent her back to bed, knowing that Ino was still a fangirl and sleep deprivation would make her useless. Besides, this meant that the enemy wouldn't know they had an extra member. Kakashi agreed to his reasoning, once Naruto explained. As it turned out, this had been a smart plan. There were only three people there, which meant they all had someone to fight. Koyuki fainted at the first sign of fire so Naruto had his clones all retrieve her while Croker and Nero covered them. Kurama was currently teaming up with Shifter to deal with the big guy on the board while Haku dealt with the, more endowed and talented, look-alike of Sakura Harano. Back in Kanaha Sakura got the sudden urge to kill Naruto and Haku. She was promptly skewered by Anko for not paying attention. Kakashi had his hands full with the leader. At least this time Minato was willing to actually listen to his commands after Naruto had somehow gotten through to him. That was a good thing because his enemy had a very well-trained fro slash trying to freeze him to death. He was already very unhappy with the fact his boxers were now frozen to his balls. It was a miracle they had yet to shrivel up with how cold they were. Finally he copied a giant whale with a horn, noticeably different from the one Naruto saved two days prior, probably because that had been a Pokemon and this was more like an oversized narwhal, and the two were sent crashing in a way that the fake island was completely ruined. He hoped the jerk got pneumonia or better yet died from hypothermia from the water. Kakashi was sneezing all the way to port, while Naruto laughed his ass off when he learned that Kakashi's opponent had literally frozen his balls to his boxers. Kakashi was vindicated when Haku had enough of the boys mocking to use his bloodline to show Naruto exactly what that felt like. Kakashi did note that while Ino yelled at him for being crude she never actually hit Naruto like he had seen Harano do on occasion. Clearly Ino knew that violence wasn't always the answer to idiot comrades, yelling, on the other hand, was acceptable so long as you weren't too cruel. Probably why Naruto helped her to find some rare poisonous plants, and one poor gloom that was freezing and harassing the sailors at port. Ino took pity on it, despite already having one on her team and kept it. She called it Frost Flower, seeing as how she had gotten it in Snow Country. Her first Oddish had recently been evolved into a Bellossom thanks to Naruto giving her a hard-to-find sunstone he picked up somewhere. She wisely didn't ask how he got it or where, but she did thank him. She had been saving up for months to buy one once her gloom hit level 30, and she finally got it there. At the very least it put him on the same level as Chuji in her totem of friends. 
It was a sad day indeed when Naruto ranked higher than her former best friend. Sakura was nice and all, but Ino quickly found that Hinata and Tenten were better girl pals, even if their taste in boys were completely different. Well, that and Naruto had enlisted the aid of the only girls he was comfortable around to help Nero perfect her transformation and acting. Ino had taken it upon herself to get the tiny fox addicted to fashion, and in the process managed to get Naruto a completely new wardrobe with much less orange. She was still impressed with his ability to play music. After the third song the director heard played by Naruto on his new flute that Haku had given him before they boarded the boat, he had gotten the blonde to play the musical accompaniment for some extra ryo. He got to read the script before Ino, and once he had the tone right, it made things more interesting, and kept Naruto from being bored which was always a dangerous thing. While they guarded the coach that they would be traveling in, Ino quizzed Haku and Naruto on medicinal plant combinations so they could hopefully pass on her interest as a poison specialist to Anko, who was one of the best. Naruto had agreed to it because even though he was an excellent gardener when it came to most plants, like fruits, vegetables, and a few minor medicinal plants like aloe, he had trouble mixing them in a way that didn't make the patient sicker than before. Fortunately, Ino was an excellent teacher when it came to plants and mixtures, probably because it was one of the few things she could agree on with Naruto, aside from his musical ability which had taken her completely by surprise. Koyokiheim has run away. Again, said one of the other actors. Damn it, this is the fifth time. Kakashi, Ino, you stay here with the rest while Haku and I locate little Miss Pris, again. Said Naruto. The first time he had done this, Kakashi had disagreed with him, right up until he realized what Naruto had done. Because of all his training with the Inuzuka with Shifter, his sense of smell was at least on PAR with one of the lesser members of the clan. All he had to do was spam his clones while Haku kept a lookout for him and when he located Koyuki, she wore a strong perfume and didn't seem to pick up that the blonde had the same sense of smell as a dog, he had his clone pop while the rest converged on her and retrieved her. Haku would escort the two back to base camp. Since Kakashi was one of the strongest members of the team, next to Naruto with his ungodly amount of chakra and a pissy Kyuubi possessed clone, Naruto knew he could trust Kakashi to watch the actual client, who happened to be Koyuki's main helper Sandayu. Since he was the one paying for the mission, that meant they had to make his safety a priority as well. Kakashi had bowed to his argument, seeing as how Ino would need the extra backup considering she was the weakest of their group. She just barely ranked above Sakura strength-wise. Why do you keep finding me, asked Koyuki. This was the seventh time she had run off. 1. You wear absurdly strong perfume. 2. Haku is in his element here, seeing as he has the Hayaton bloodline and actually knows how to use it decently. And 3. Your damn manager was the one who hired us lady, and I never give up on a client when I'm hired. That's true. The first time I met him he had been hired on an underranked mission and he narrowly saved both me and my master while protecting his client. How bad is an underranked mission, asked Koyuki, somewhat curious. We were only supposed to deal with bandits, not an overcompensating swordsman, a tranny apprentice and two idiots who barely pass as cannon fodder, said Naruto flatly. Just for that tranny comment I am freezing your sheets until this Dota character is dealt with, said Haku flatly. Naruto paused handed the bitchy actress to a clone, then hung into the most adorable blonde child with extremely sad puppy eyes Haku had ever seen. He twitched, and Koyuki was trying not to burst into giggles at the sight of this. Haku and I, I you wouldn't freeze my sheets, would you, said Naruto, eyes started to brim with tears. Gah. All right already. Just knock it off with the henge, said Haku, submitting to the kawaii sight of a chibi Naruto. He may be a guy but in reality he acted more like a girl when confronted by adorable things. Hell, even Ino would want to glomp Naruto, especially when he busts out fox ears and a very adorable tail. He looked like a little fox. An idea came to Haku. It was spiteful and cruel, but he would still have his revenge for that tranny comment. I double fox dare you to turn into this again, only with fox ears and tail in front of Ino. Why? Blackmail pictures. Can you imagine how embarrassed she would be seen hugging you when she's a Suzuki fan girl? Sold. Of oh, course that was nothing to what Hinata would do next time they trained with Tsunade if she believed he was becoming a playboy who didn't notice her. Haku resisted the urge to cackle, payback would be slow and painful. They missed the group, so they went through the icy tunnels where they were most likely waiting. 
Everything was normal, right up until the point that the rails thawed out without warning and the sound of a train could be heard behind them. Shit. It sounds like they are bringing a train in. Naruto, haul ass, yelled Haku. Naruto's eyes widened, and he deactivated his weights before creating a second clone and grabbing Haku. Speed demon or not, there wasn't a chance in hell his surrogate older brother could outrun a damn train, even with his ice mirrors. They sped out of there so fast that even Guy would be envious. They were out a good two minutes before the train was. That was all the time Haku needed when he realized that Sandaiyu had somehow gotten his samurai buddies to make a charge on what was obviously a shinobi made train. Which meant that bulky thing had to have a massive kunao launcher at the very least. Which was why he made a giant ice wall with the help of Kori, Shifter, and Hitomi, who had figured out ice beam thanks to the first two and being around Haku when he was using Hayaton a lot. It would be odd if a water type Pokemon didn't pick up a few ice moves when being around that a lot. Too bad Kakashi had gotten better at protecting his precious porn. Flashback. Haku spotted a familiar orange cover and twitched. Not even two days at sea, and Kakashi was reading that damn porn. It wasn't even good porn. Naruto spotted his look and grinned. You grab it, I threaten to burn it. Suzuki taught me this cat on that would be perfect for that damn book. What are we doing, asked Ino. Naruto nodded towards the book. Kakashi. Prank. Poorly written pornographic novel that demeans females everywhere. Turned to Ash, he said. Huh. I'm going to steal Kakashi's poorly written porn book and Naruto will burn it. It's trashy, full of errors, and there is a very good reason why most kunoichi hate it on sight, even without the author around. The man tends to hang around the bathhouses and peeks on women while they're trying to relax. Oh. Count me in then. If you don't burn it I can still lace it with enough itching powder that will make his hands burn and won't go away for five hours, said Ino grinning. Come to think of it, she had seen her father reading those books too. <laughs> Haku smirked as he created a pair of ice mirrors and proceeded to steal the book. Naruto handed it to Ino who laced it with the itching powder in case Kakashi got it back before Naruto could burn it. Kami knows Kakashi had to have spares. Now don't be hasty. Said Kakashi. Naruto had bought a lighter as a secondary way to burn the porn. And with how old the book was and the numerous times Kakashi, ahem, read it, chances were high it would go up in flames. Kakashi, either quit reading your porn on duty, or it gets turned to ash. Also, you may as well help us refine our jutsu library, since you are the man who copied a thousand jutsu. Unless you want Haku to steal this again so we can burn it, said Naruto evilly. His team was grinning evilly, particularly Croker. Jiraiya's first partner really didn't like his books. He had learned Fire Punch solely to destroy them. Kakashi's lone visible eye was actually crying. All right, all right. Tell me what your element is and I'll give you some jutsu to practice with. Just leave my porn alone, said Kakashi weeping. His poor books. Naruto smirked. That's what we wanted to hear. Right guys, said the blonde evilly. Ino and Haku snickered. It would be six hours before the powder wore off, and it only took the threat of a repeat performance for Kakashi to keep his word. Too bad Ino was an earth and fire type, she couldn't practice the new jutsu at all. Naruto took one look at the massive blimp and had to comment. It was in his nature to be a smart ass. Yeesh, I thought the train was bad enough, but this guy is overcompensating big time. Koyuki choked back a laugh. Ino resisted the urge to slap Naruto. Suddenly he went to his backpack which was wiggling around. Lax, cried the newly hatched baby Pokemon. Cool. Let's see, you're a girl, so your name is Ayam, said Naruto. The newly named Ayam yawned, and then reached into Naruto's bag to start munching on one of his ration bars. It made a face once the taste hit. I'll make you some ramen later, Naruto promised it. Lax. Koyuki yelped when a hook grabbed her by the stomach and hauled her up to the blimp. Naruto was quick to grab her leg, as he left Shifter with Haku on the ground. V, cried Shifter. He didn't like to be separate from Naruto. Haku hugged him tightly. He he he, look what we have here boys. A little rat caught in our trap. You shouldn't have held on brat, sneered one of the snow ninja. Koyuki was in the cell across from his. Ayam had hidden inside a spare seal ball which, once Naruto had a chance to hide long enough, he knew better than to try and rescue Koyuki. They obviously needed her for something so they wouldn't kill her yet, he sealed away in a hidden spot on his body. 
One of the things Jiraiya taught him was how to place seals on yourself though that was extremely dangerous to do. If cut there the blood could wreck the seal and you would have to prepare and use a special seal just to retrieve the items, and Jiraiya wasn't very good at those. Out of his entire team, Naruto was only missing Shifter, and the separation was just as painful for him as it was for his best friend. Koyuki watched as he grabbed something from his shoe to cut through the steel chains holding him up. He couldn't call any of his Pokemon because he didn't want the snow idiots to know they were still on him. He was called the most unpredictable shinobi of Kanaha for a reason after all. Why do you fight, she asked. Shifter is my partner for a reason. When I first found him, he had just escaped some hidden lab that had experimented on him horribly. It took years for him to trust Hanane, who is the village vet when she had needles around him. We depend on each other for emotional support, because until he showed up I had no one. No parents, no friends, and the entire village hated me for circumstances outside my control. I had mobs chasing after me every year on my birthday, which unfortunately coincides with the Kyuubai festival. With my whisker-like birthmarks you can see how that turned out. I fight so that neither of us has to go through the pain of loneliness ever again. Koyuki was properly horrified. Chased on your birthday because of a few birthmarks. No one to support him until recently. No wonder the kid was screwed up in the head and starved for attention. It was a miracle he was still so cheerful after all that. Got it, said Naruto. The snow shinobi showed up soon after he broke the chains, and he knocked them out cold. It was easier to break the lock on Koyuki's cell than pick it. Once out, Naruto used his nose to smell the quickest route out. Only to come face to face with two snow shinobi, one of whom reeked of dogs and the other of poisons, wait a minute. Where's Haku, he asked. With the others. He's their best bet against any sneak attacks, said Kakashi. How the hell did you know it was us, said Ino. Naruto tapped his nose. Kakashi reeks of dogs, lightning, and shame. You smell of poison, plants that are extremely hard to find in northern climates, and summer. We really need to get you to work with an Inuzuka, said Kakashi sweat dropping. Who did you think got it so high in the first place, said Naruto rhetorically. The four made their way outside, following Naruto who could smell it. Kakashi noted Naruto's agitated state as he kept reflexively looking for Shifter next to him out of pure habit. Kakashi had seen such reactions before, in Chunin who were often partnered together for so long that they had become attuned to the other to the point that they didn't need to signal, they instinctively moved as one. Izumo and Katetsu were a very good example of such a partnership. Kakashi tried not to sigh, if only Team 7 had been that good before Kurane had gotten him blacklisted from the roster he might still have a team. He had told Sarutobi that he didn't want to be an instructor, the memories of Minato were still too fresh after 14 years. He was messed up in the head after Minato died and he had to kill Rin to save Naruto, and he knew it. It was the reason why he had never pursued a relationship with anyone. He didn't dare try. Seeing the way Naruto acted around Shifter gave him hope, and the possibility that he could trust his Pokemon to be there for him like Naruto's team was there for him through thick or thin. Ino followed Naruto without hesitation, though her mind was full of thoughts. How had Naruto gotten so good? Why did most of the village hate him and curse him behind his back to the point that they would actively kick him out of stores? She had seen him in their shop a few times before, and it was only her father that kept her mother from throwing him out initially. Ino suspected that was why Naruto had gardening as a hobby, it was one of the few stores that let him in and didn't try to overcharge him. Being on a team with him, she came to realize that Naruto was a lot like Chuji. And the way he saved that Waylord showed her that he had a lot of hidden talents. Plus there was the fact that instead of trying to catch a gloom, he gave it to her instead. He even helped her to catch a hopip, which she had always wanted to get. He wasn't the dead last everyone assumed. And she was beginning to think that maybe, out of those who passed the secondary genin exam, that her former best friend Sakura was the dead last of the group. She had only started to act like a shinobi because she had passed that random test Tsunade had given out to find some decent medic ninja. Even so, this serious Naruto had caught her completely by surprise, yet she never considered not listening to the blonde at all. This wasn't prankster Naruto, the goofy kid she was used to. This was trainer Naruto, and he was more serious. She couldn't wait for this mission to be over so she could talk to Naruto about improving her Pokemon training so that they could be better as a team. Naruto nearly cried with relief when they ran into Haku outside and Shifter nearly tackled him to the ground. 
It was clear that the EV had missed him just as much as Naruto had felt the pang of him being gone. Kakashi almost wondered if Naruto had followed his Pokemon right out to the closest exit just so they could be reunited. It was pretty obvious to everyone that the two were the perfect partners. So, Koyokiheim, what is Dotu after, asked Naruto. He's after the Rainbow Glacers, or whatever is hidden up there. My father spent a lot of money on something there, and he left me this crystal, said Koyoki, pulling up her necklace. Right. I say we take the glacier before he does. And we get rid of him once and for all, said Naruto. Agreed. That guy must die, said Ino venomously. I suppose we have no choice. In order to ensure Koyokiheim becomes queen, we must take out her uncle. This wasn't what I signed up for, sighed Kakashi. Ino looked at the Sakura lookalike with trepidation. This woman could fly and she couldn't. However, Ino wasn't a slouch like Sakura. When she wasn't training in her family arts, she was learning how to make new poisons. She grinned and called out her strongest Pokemon. Bellossom, magical leaf. Cover her in pollen. Eno called out. Bell, cried the grass type. The air filled with pollen-covered leaves that glowed like rainbows. Snorrent, use blizzard. Keep those leaves away from me, cried the pink-haired Kunoichi. It was already too late. Magical leaf had covered the area with poison, and it was one of those attacks that couldn't miss if used. The Kunoichi started to cough, blood filling her lungs. The pollen Eno had thrown to her bellossom was one that was deadly if inhaled. The only reason they were immune was because they had worked on it extensively and had built up a tolerance for it. Plus Eno had the antidote. The Snorrent wasn't doing much better. This was a potent poison that harmed Pokemon too, though the survival rate was considerably higher. Plus Eno had the assumption Naruto wouldn't take it too well if she killed a Pokemon on a mission he was supposed to be leading. Haku was having fun. This was the first time he could go completely wild in battle. While his reserves were decent enough, it took far too much chakra to use his ice techniques in Kanaha for his liking. Here, however, he had an instinctive grasp of the landscape. Damn it stay still, roared the snowboarder. Go to hell, smirked Haku. Haku raised his hand, and ice mirrors appeared all around them. Prepare to be locked in an icy grave forever. Icicle storm. The mirrors turned into spiked coffins, and they closed in on the snowboarder. He was skewered in so many places that it would be a miracle for him to survive the blood loss alone. He looked like a piece of Swiss cheese with how many holes he had. He never had a chance to bring out his team. Hitomi was dancing next to Haku. Here was proof that her partner was strong. Naruto was with Neru, and they had tracked Koyoki to the Rainbow Glacers when Dotu had grabbed them while in flight. Naruto was glad once again for the strong perfume Koyoki favored. It made tracking her child's play for his nose. Neru, I want you to videotape this fight. Whatever you do, try not to get hit by debris. Croker will guard you just in case, since he is the senior fighter, said Naruto. Neru, who was in Naruto form, as Anko had once called Naruto's sexy jutsu form, nodded. You got it Anaki, said Neru. She could talk in human form better than she could in her true form. Naruto ran down the glacier and waited for his moment to shine. Above all else, he planned to make this flashy as hell. It's more or less how it goes in the movie, I am not repeating that here, so go rent it or buy it. Naruto woke up in a room he didn't recognize, with all his Pokemon around him. They mobbed him the moment he woke up. About time you woke up ramen breath, said Ino smugly. Ow. How long was I out? A day or two. Koyoki recently took control and she's looking for a way to pacify the snow ninja about the fact she won't be using them to declare war on everyone, said Haku. Hmm. How long has it been since there was a ranking exam, said Naruto. Dota didn't allow anyone under Chunin to take part in one, so quite a while. Why, asked Haku. I have an idea. One that hasn't been around for a while, said Naruto grinning. Pokemon contests? What on earth are those, asked Koyoki. They are an alternate way to relieve some of the pent-up energy trainers, rangers, and breeders have. It doesn't really require beating the hell out of the other team, but rather impressing a series of judges on how good they can make their attacks, said Naruto. He unsealed a book on the old ways before the cataclysm. Chapter 10, Pokemon Contests I think this would be Eno's cup of tea, said Naruto reading the book. Eno took the book from his hand, and her eyes widened. Oh this is perfect. 
It's like a fashion show for Pokemon and their partners. The better their moves look, the higher their score, said Ino. She handed the book to the new Daimyo of Snow, and Koyuki's grin widened the more she read. This would be perfect to diffuse the issues she was having. Plus it would put her in the good graces of the Genin and the Snow Village elders. Who's going to be the announcer, asked Koyuki. As one, the team pointed at Ino. I would have assumed Naruto would want the job, she said amused. Not on your life. I'm going to be on the panel of judges and on the side healing anyone who screws up. You can tell the elders that you plan to promote the old contests in an effort to one-up the major villages. I know for a fact none of them have even heard of this sort of thing before, and it will appeal to the civilians greatly, said Naruto. True. Civvies never really get to see anything other than battles when it comes to trainers and the like. This is a relatively non-violent way to appeal to people, said Kakashi. Koyuki grinned. And I bet we could add this to the film to promote it further. Once it hits DVD we'll send a copy to each of you since it was part of the payment Naruto asked for because he filmed the fall of Dotu, said Koyuki. Ino looked at Naruto with a grin. Yet another reason I'm starting to respect you ramen breath. Which reminds me, I saw a Budu on the way here. I think you'll be getting more grass types around here now that it's warmed up a bit, said Naruto. A Budu? Which way did you see it again, said Ino. Naruto gave her directions and an hour later she came back happy as a lark. She had been trying to get a Buda or Rosalia for months now. Naruto was helping set up the stage for the contests when he heard an odd rumor. There's a mountain that hasn't thought. Where, said Naruto. Where are you going Naruto, asked Haku. There's a mountain that has a permanent layer of frost on it. All the ice types have been congregating there since the generators started up. I was thinking of visiting it, said Naruto. I'll ask Kakashi if he can keep an eye around here while we go out to get some new Pokemon for our teams. I'll take Eno later, said Haku. So did you get any good Hayatan scrolls from the Snow Village, asked Naruto. A lot of basic stuff, some items that once belonged to my clan, and a bunch of tips on how to skate on ice, said Haku pleased. Where have you two been, asked Eno. Catching ice types. Once this is over I'll take you over there so you can get some for your team too, said Haku. Count me in, said Ino. How's the stage looking? Frost Flower and Haru-chan have been making the flowers really lively. By the way, where can I seal these plants that they won't on us before we get home? I've been stocking up a lot, said Ino happily. I can seal them for you. Where are they, asked Naruto. Ino handed them to him, and he put them in a special seal. Now they won't die until we get home. You did ask what type of soil they need right, asked Naruto. I forgot. I'll ask before we leave, said Ino embarrassed. Naruto had his clones finish up the stage in the middle of one of the best looking fields. The director was still getting into place, so he had to build spots for the cameras to go. Normally the snow ninja would be wary of doing something like this. But as Naruto pointed out, they were giving all the publicity of being in a contest solely to their village and were only acting as judges. Which meant once the movie came out, they would get more mission requests. It was free promotion after all. All done over here boss, yelled one of the clones. Same here, yelled another. Then dispel you idiots, he yelled back. Ow, he yelped. Because those damn clones had dispelled by hitting themselves with hammers. The clones started to set up the cameras at all angles. The stage was out in the open, so they would have an excellent view of the Pokemon and trainers. They were promoting Yukigakur as a way to pacify the angry shinobi. So they had to do a very good job of it. Ino was in her best outfit, she had packed it the second she heard they were going to be in a movie set. Never know when you would be an extra, and Koyuki had done up her makeup personally. Naruto and Kakashi had avoided that room since Haku, Ino, and Koyuki were giggling in a way that gave them the creeps. If Haku wasn't by, Kakashi would eat his ika ika. She adjusted her hair a little, and got ready. Finally she stepped out onto the stage with a huge smile. The cameras were on her completely and she was in her element. The gossip princess of Kanaha was about to have her first on-stage debut. She couldn't wait to rub Sakura's face in it. Welcome one and all to the first ever Pokemon contest held since the Cataclysm. For those of you who are unaware of what a contest is, the answer is simple. Most trainers, breeders, and rangers do their best to make their Pokemon powerful, but can they make their battles appealing as well? There is more to training than just fighting. Now. On our panel of judges we have the new daimyo of spring, Koyuki Dano. 
the only real expert of the world before the cataclysm from Kanaha, Uzumaki Naruto. And the elder of the hidden village of snow, Tsurera Koto Mine. Let's give our judges a round of applause before we introduce all the contestants from the village of snow, said Ino. The audience cheered and applauded for the judges. Now for our contestants. We have representing the Genin Yuki. Hurry. And Hikari. For the Chunin we have Sora. Nades Hiko. And Tsuki. For our Jounin, we had only one applicant to pass the screening process, so let's give a big round of applause to Yukito. Yukito was the lone male of the seven to pass, and his nickname was Snow Bunny among his colleagues. He had silver hair and brown eyes. Now let's have a round of applause for our candidates for the big prize. A complete set of evolutionary stones, 10,000 Ryo cash, and a mission of their choice. Naruto had picked the prizes and supplied the stones. Originally there had been a ribbon for a prize, but he had changed it to a mission of the ninja's choice instead. All three judges had contributed to the prize. Now to begin our contest. The first one up is Yukito-san. Go Frosty. Yukito called, tossing his seal ball into the air. Frosty turned out to be a Frost lass. Fros. Frosty use icy wind then swift. F-R-O-S. Frosty sent a torrent of stars into the air, then froze them into beautiful ice-covered diamonds. The audience applauded the combination, as it was quite appealing to the eye. Very nicely done. Most people have trouble combining two attacks like that, but it was flawlessly executed, commented Naruto. They're like frosted shooting stars. I approve, said Koyuki, clearly impressed. There was definite power behind that attack, and you could feel the chill from several feet away. Well done, said Tsurera. Well done Yukito-san. Next up is Yuki-san. Go, Glacier. Glacian. Naruto watched with interest. It was clear Yuki took very good care of Glacier. Hail, then use Iron Tail, said Yuki. Because Naruto knew how out of control techniques could get, he had special seals that kept the hard pieces of ice from hitting the audience and the judges. Glacier jumped to and fro, turning the hail into small bursts of icy fireworks. Naruto barely refrained from applauding. Very nicely done. The execution of a normally irritating attack that lasts for a while and the use of Iron Tail to turn them into miniature fireworks. Inspiring, said Naruto. Yuki blushed at his praise, especially when she could tell he was being completely honest. The flash of colors as the sun hit the destroyed hailstones. Absolutely breathtaking, said Koyuki. Like Naruto she had trouble not applauding. A very interesting use of a normally useless attack. I approve, said Tsurera. She had been uncertain about this whole contest idea, but now she was glad to have taken the chance. This little show was going to boost mission rates in the future, she could just tell. Plus it gave some of the weaker ninja something to rub in the noses of their stronger colleagues. Up now is Hari-san. Come on out, Machi. Caddy. Ino barely refrained from squealing. She loved Skitty and Del Caddy. Machi, use icy wind then tail whip. The Delcaddy used its tail to move and direct the icy cold winds. The effect was quite impressive. Absolutely stunning, said Naruto. And it was rather impressive, since Hari was the first of the contestants who didn't use an ice type to use icy wind. Very impressive, said Koyuki. Creative, was all Tsurera had to say about it. Next up is the last of the Genin contestants, Hikari-san. Go beauty. Beauty turned out to be a beautifully. Beauty, silver wind. Once the wind was out, Hikari then ordered, now use twister. The twister sucked up the silver wind and caught the light of the sun, creating a rainbow effect. Very interesting, said Naruto. Cute, said Koyuki. A skillful use of bug and dragon type moves. And now, for the Chunin contestants. Come on up, Nadshiko san Go sphere. Sphere. Sphere, ice ball. Then balance it on an aqua tail. Sphiel. Sphiel created a good sized ice ball, Nades Hiko had been trying to make ice balls the size of her head, and began to bounce it around using aqua tail. Considering the Pokemon didn't have much of a tail to speak of, it was less impressive than it could have been. Sarasan, you are up next. Go Pidgeot. With a cry that sounded far too much like its second evolutionary form, the large tan, gold and red bird appeared. It was an impressive specimen for a common type. Pidgeot, use whirlwind then roost. The pigeon type began to circle the whirlwind, displaying an innate talent for riding the wind. And when it rested, feathers danced around it. 
Very nice. A bit lacking in passion, but still very impressive, said Naruto. To be honest he was a bit bored with this, but his poker face didn't show that much. I like the fact she didn't use any ice types, which seem a bit too prevalent today, but a common Pokemon. Very impressive. The Pidgeot is well cared for, and is larger than most I've seen. She clearly takes very good care of it, commented Tsurera. And now our last contestant, Tsuki-san. Go Missy. Miss Drevius. Missy, use Shadow Ball then Nightshade. Missy shot the ball upward, then blasted it with Nightshade. The black fireworks caused by the stunt were spectacular to see. Absolutely stunning. The use of dark and ghost type attacks. I love it, said Naruto enthusiastically. A visual masterpiece, said Koyuki. A great combination, said Tsurera, very impressed. And now that the first half of the contest is over with, our judges will convene to decide who pass on to the second half, the battle stage. For those of you who don't know, the battle stage is where those who have impressed both judges and audience battle it out to determine who wins. Half an hour later, Eno came back onto the extended stage, which had been pulled out from the original one. On either end was a small box for the trainers to stand in, and behind them was a scoreboard. It was run by Lightning Chakra, and for each hit, the bars would go down. Kakashi was the one ensuring the scoreboard stayed charged, it was either that or get roped into construction and tearing down the stage. Welcome back to the contest. The votes are in, and those passing on to the next round are, Tsuki. Yuki. Hurry. And Yukito. Now for our second round we have a simple system. Land more hits than your opponent, and you pass on to the next round. Also, if you knock out the other Pokemon, you automatically pass. Just remember, there is a 5 minute time limit, so try to keep it short and sweet okay, said Ino. Yukito walked up to the stage facing Yuki, his younger sister. Now folks, for the second round you have to use a different Pokemon than the one you had in the first. This ensures that the one you use is well rested. However that only applies to the first of the second round. You must battle with the same Pokemon against the second opponent, but don't worry. We heal them back to minimum fighting strength. So without further ado, let's battle. Go, Yosagi, said Yukito. Buniri. Go Saber. Grovel. Ino made a note to ask Yuki where she caught a Trico. She really needed something like that to boost her team's attack, and that Buniri was just adorable. Yosagi, use Ice Beam. Saber, counter that with Solar Beam. The two attacks clashed, thanks to the rather bright sun, the Solar Beam's charge didn't take nearly as long as normal. One of the little known uses for Sunny Day was to make it easier to use Solar Beam. The charge time when Sunny Day was active was a few seconds, instead of minutes. Though a fight at noon in a place that was rather close to the sun's rays worked just as well too. The attack resulted in a giant block of oddly shaped ice. With that, Saber and Yosagi clashed with their fists. Yosagi, double slap. Saber, leaf blade. It was clear where Saber's name came from, as the grovel's leaf glowed and it expertly used the flat of the blade to counter the hits. Apparently Yuki had a habit of sparing with her Pokemon using a real sword. Saber, Leech Seed. The Grovel spat out several seeds which covered the Buniri. It was already exhausted, since Saber had more experience fighting opponents using its Leaf Blade attack. It passed out from the drain of the attack. Buniri is unable to battle. Winner is Grovel, announced Haku. He was in his favorite kimono, and since he was the acting breeder for this thing, he got to proctor the fights. Plus it gave him some screen time. Naruto could already see the marriage proposals for Haku, and he knew for a fact that with his girl looks it wouldn't be just the girls. He knew for a fact Zabuza was already waiting with cameras to capture that. Perfect blackmail material. Yukito passed by his younger sister and congratulated her. He knew how hard she trained with Saber. She beamed at him. Next up is Hari vs Tsuki. Go haunt, said Tsuki. Haunter. Go Meg. Maganium. Battle start said Eno. Meg, use Vine Whip. Haunt, Curse. Haunter dodged the Vine Whip and cut the amount Meg could use several times down with Curse. Haunt, Lick. Haunter's tongue licked Meganium. You could see the shivers go down the grass type's spine. Meg, use Razor Leaf, said Hurry. Unfortunately, the Lick attack from Haunter had a secondary side effect, which became apparent. Meganium was paralyzed. Haunt, use Nightshade. 
Haunter. The blast of ghostly energy slammed into Meg. The poor grass type didn't stand a chance. Meganium is unable to battle. Winner is Haunter, announced Haku. Hurry walked up to Tsuki. Good battle, she said. You too. Same time next week, grinned Tsuki. Tsuki was the best ghost user in the snow village. Ten minutes later. And now the final round. Yuki vs Tsuki. Battle, begin. Saber, go. Go haunt. Haunter. Grovel. Saber, use leaf blade. Haunt, use shadow ball. Grovel batted the shadow ball away with the leaf blade, and went in for the attack. Haunter vanished between the cracks of the wooden stadium. Haunt, use nightshade, said Tsuki. Haunter appeared behind Groival and attacked. Saber, use protect. The shield appeared just as the blast was about to hit. Tsuki thought quickly. Haunt, use fire punch. Naruto wasn't the only one to lean forward with interest. Haunter's hand turned red with flames as it struck Groival in the face. Grov, cried Saber in pain. The hit did more than hurt, it loosened the odd necklace around the septal's neck. Naruto recognized it instantly. Apparently he wasn't the only one who made Everstones into necklaces. With the stone removed, he discreetly had Shifter pick it up out of view of the camera to return to the girl, Groival started to glow. Septal. Naruto knew that the cash this movie got would skyrocket once word got out that an actual evolution occurred in the movie. Very few civilians got to see that moment when a Pokemon evolved. Hurry got over her shock of evolution and cried, Saber, use Iron Tail. Septal, cried Saber, as it used its fern-like tail to slam into Haunter. The ghost cried out in shock before it fainted. Haunter is unable to battle. Septal and Hurry are the winners, declared Haku. The screen behind them changed to show the newly evolved Septal and Hurry grinning. Koyuki handed the girl the cash and evolutionary stones inside a trophy, which they had specially made. Hurry could pick from her choice of missions later. Naruto did discreetly hand her the Everstone necklace back. Ino practically squealed with joy when she learned that because of how well the contest had gone, they were allowed to have an egg from the Snow Village breeding area. They weren't allowed in the village itself, but they could pick one out and it would be brought to them. Naruto was pleased to hear that because of the contest, more trainers from the village were taking their teams seriously again. Though that probably had something to do with the fact Koyuki said she wasn't going to downsize the Pokemon division like she was some of the less popular ninja programs. If relations between Pokemon and trainer shot up because of that announcement, well, Naruto wasn't going to complain now was he? Haku was pleased too, because he had gotten a lot of beginner and a few intermediate Hayaton style scrolls, some of which came from his clan. He even got a flying model armor like that one chick had for Naruto. Plus they all got two hours on the only still frozen mountain to catch whatever they wanted. When they got on the boat for home, they all had new additions to their teams. Ino had her new gloom, a Buniri, Mingchino, Budo, and a Trico egg. She also had a ton of rare plants to raise back home, all sealed courtesy of Naruto. Of course her new hopip was on her head enjoying the breeze. Ino rarely had it in the seal ball. Haku had a Lapras, Cubone, how it got there no one knew, a random egg that someone had found in the back of the breeder's area, since he had trouble making up his mind and no one else wanted it, Snorrent, and a Merrill. Kakashi only caught two. Corpish and a Sharpedo. Apparently he wasn't as fond of ice types. Naruto had caught three, but only kept one on him. He was now the proud owner of Atropius, Sfeel, and a Piplup. His egg was a Jibble. Naturally they all rather enjoyed their mission. It wasn't often you got so many Pokemon for your team and some new Jutsu scrolls. Plus Naruto's nice bonus for his contest idea and taping the boss battle. Ayam was currently sleeping in his bag. He was just glad he had that strength training to fall back on, because Ayam was heavy. Right when they were about to go to shore, they heard a low sound. Looking off the starboard side, Naruto realized it was the Waylord he had helped earlier. It had something on its head. Shifter turned into a spion and talked to the Waylord. She said this is for you. She found it on the sea floor, said Shifter. Thank you. The Waylord sang farewell, and went back into the sea. The shell it had given him had the same weird shape as some you would find on the sea floor. Kakashi was the only one to recognize it though. A helix fossil? I bet that Waylord didn't know what it was, said Kakashi. What is it? asked Ino. One of those odd fossils you can find occasionally that can be revived into a Pokemon. That one I think belongs to Omenit. Cool, 
said Naruto. Unfortunately the ability to revive fossils has been lost for the most part. Most shinobi keep them as prizes in case someone ever figures out how to restore them. I have an old amber myself, said Kakashi. He liked Aerodactyl. Enough said. Welcome back Naruto. How was the mission? Awesome, said Naruto. He may have inadvertently gotten us an alliance with the new land of spring, said Haku. What, said Tsunade, eyes narrowing. The actress we were paid to protect is the new daimyo of spring, Queen Koyuki. In addition, Naruto revived an old practice called Pokemon contests in order to help lessen the anger the snow village had towards the fact Koyuki Dano planned to downsize their military budget in favor of repairing the country. Apparently the leader of Snow liked the idea so much that he said he would seriously consider entering an alliance with us once the area had stabilized from the climate shift and people got used to the new daimyo, said Ino. Well at least you didn't accidentally get another country to declare war on us, said Tsunade. He also used his healing techniques on an injured wailerd on the way there and it was caught on film, said Haku. Tsunade looked at Naruto. He whistled innocently. The village will get a nice bonus once the movie sells. Since I did most of the music, and got the best screen time, we get 5% of the DVD sales, said Naruto. Tsunade smirked. So when do you want to hold that concert to display your new music skills, she said. Give me a week to wind down and prepare. I'm going to need to fix the garden up for guests, those invited will get a notice two days in advance, said Naruto. How was your mission Ino, asked Inoichi. A lot more fun than I thought. I even got to add to my team she said pleased. Oh? What did you add to it? Ino threw all her seal balls into the air, revealing her new Pokemon. As they got used to their new home, she told her father all about her mission, going into detail about what Naruto did to her surprise. When she mentioned the fact he had come up with a way to help the snow village, Inoichi's eyebrows shot up. Clearly Naruto was his father's son. So where are these plants? Naruto sealed them for me, but I wanted to rest for a bit before I transplanted them. Smart move. Just remember, if they are poisonous. I have to build up an immunity before I can use them in the field. I know daddy. But seriously, Naruto surprised me in spring. I always thought he was an idiot, but the way he took charge. A true shinobi hides their ability until needed, said Inoichi wisely. Well, thanks to him I have an awesome new team. He even helped me catch a hopip, and you know how much I love those. Oh yes, Inoichi knew. She had a giant hopip doll in her room for crying out loud from her fifth birthday. If it wasn't for the fact they didn't have any hopip eggs when she graduated, she wouldn't have gotten an oddish. Welcome back. How was snow? More exciting than expected. Naruto's luck struck again, and I now have a lapras and an egg no one else wanted. Oh, and we were all in the movie, said Haku blandly. Say what? The actress in question was the missing Snow Princess, now Daimyo, and Queen of Spring. Naruto's luck managed to get us a real fight and thanks to his knowledge of pre-cataclysm events, we ended up hosting a fashion show called a Pokemon contest in order to help out the Snow Village. According to their leader, they are seriously considering an alliance with us, said Haku blandly. Damn that kid has messed up luck, said Zabuza staring. On the bright side, I also got plenty of new jutsu to use for my bloodline, so it wasn't that bad, said Haku cheerfully. That does it, next time the brat gets a mission above C rank I am so going with him. I'm bored damn it. Haku giggled in a way that worried Zabuza. If he didn't know any better he would swear his apprentice was gay. I'm home guys, yelled Naruto. He was immediately tackled by his team, some of which came straight from snow slash spring through the transport boxes. Shinobi who had enough room for their Pokemon had the option of having them straight to their house instead of the communal training ground. There was also a device that allowed those Pokemon to go the training ground without human help from their homes. Naruto's parents had such an arrangement and Tsunade just had to reactivate it. He was about to close the gate when a flash of fire appeared. When it died down, a large nine tails was there, next to an Alakazam. Uh, hi. He let them in, and even made everyone dinner. While he was gone on his mission, they had to join the other Pokemon in the training ground to eat. So who did you two belong to, he asked. Alakazam pointed at a picture, and Ninetales pointed at the one next to it. Naruto's eyes widened. You belonged to my mom and dad, he said in shock. They nodded. Apparently they had been waiting for the house to be reopened so they could come home. Well the more the merrier. 
I won't force you to join me in missions but you are free to come and go. Mind helping me clear a spot so I can do the outdoor concert in a few days, he asked. Ninetales eyes gleamed. It always loved when Kushina played an instrument. It quickly joined Kurama in clearing a small spot. Tropic, Naruto's new Tropius, was seen fluttering around for a full day carrying mail. Inside each invitation was a single-use seal that would allow them to bypass the ones Naruto had set up for his house. Some were already allowed in, but it was an emergency seal in case they needed to get in and Naruto wasn't in the village. Hinata, Niji, the third Hokage, Asuma, Kano Amaru, and his group, Shino, Ino, Haku, Zabuza, Tsunade, Kiba, Kurane, Kakashi, Shikamaru, Chuji, Iruka, Anko, Tuki and Ayam were all invited to the house. Alakazam helped to set up the seats, and the rest helped with decorations and food. Since Naruto knew how much Chuji ate, he had an Akimichi-approved catering group provide the food and drinks. No way was he paying for a buffet he had to cook for an Akimichi. Naruto had all his instruments ready. This was the first time he played for his friends and he wanted to be sure that it rocked. He had all the songs in his head memorized, and Kyuubai had promised a few Whirlpool songs in exchange for being let out. His team planned to be the background pyrotechnics for him. The guests came in one at a time. Soon they were all waiting for Naruto to start playing, snacking on the food he had provided. Hope you're ready for this guys, said Naruto grinning. He was thanking every deity he knew that he didn't have stage fright. He put his flute to his mouth and began to play. If you have the Jira Ichi movie, play that lullaby Mei sings to Max and Jira Ichi to get them to sleep. Next was Oration, the song that soothed two legendary Pokemon when they were trying to kill each other. The song after that was something Naruto had heard once at a shrine, and he had gotten the song from the priest. It was called the Kagura. A song meant to please the gods. From what he could tell, the Pokemon loved it just as much as the gods did. He continued to play for a few hours before ending it with the song of the sea using the shell he had bought. It actually sounded better when he used that. When it was over, he noticed that everyone was staring for a moment before the clapping started. Wow Naruto, I didn't know you could play so good, said Chuji impressed. He actually stopped eating just to hear the songs. That alone said how much he liked them. Once it was over they all devoured the food Naruto had ordered, leaving the seals off long enough for the company to set things up had been a nightmare. Luckily Alakazam had kept an eye on everyone and the servers didn't get too offended, and left a few hours after that. The old Hokage decided to look for an old book of songs for Naruto for his birthday, which was coming up in a month. If he had known how good the boy was with instruments, he would have gotten some for him sooner. Naruto took one look at the calendar and went into total panic mode. His birthday was in two weeks. While the mobs had more or less stopped, that didn't stop the drunk idiots from gathering together and bothering him. Which was why he immediately started to upgrade every seal and trap on the wall. Alakazam had to look into Naruto's memories to see why he was so freaked out, and he wasn't happy. Tsunade, of course, was less than pleased to learn of these mobs and idiots who harassed her only remaining family. Which was why she did something that Naruto would later complain about. She told Ino and Haku that his birthday was coming up soon and the two started conspiring against him. Ino cackled much like Anko would when she had Shikamaru kidnap Naruto so they could throw him a proper birthday party. It was a good thing Shifter realized what they were doing though. Anko was the one to report the odd sounds in the forest of death. Normally this wouldn't bother anyone, but the fact was that Anko didn't recognize the sound at all, which was why Tsunade sent Naruto in with his current team. Naruto's team had Shifter, Tropic, Penny, Piplup, Karama, Neru, and one of Anko's prized Dradini eggs. She had given him one that had odd coloring, suspecting it to be a shiny. It was normally blue and white, but this one was orange. According to her, it had to be meant for Naruto. Naruto walked into the forest with Anko, since she was the only one intimately familiar with it. So where did you hear this crying? Anko lead the way. The deeper they went, the more Naruto heard the odd sound. It almost sounded like. He stopped cold. He had a bad feeling about this. Shit, I think we're dealing with Celebi, said Naruto. What? What other Pokemon lives in forests and says bye bye all the time, he said. Anko paled. She had no desire to be thrown into the past. Bye bye bye. The forest began to glow in odd hue. They stood still, because one of the legends said that if you stayed absolutely still then Celebi wouldn't accidentally grab you. 
Suddenly a green fairy creature flew past them, and they could see why it was freaked out. A tiger was trying to eat it. Shifter, use confusion on that tiger, shouted Naruto in a panic. A spion, cried Shifter. The jewel on its head glowed brightly before the tiger suddenly crashed into a tree, knocking it out cold. Bye bye, said Celebi, drifting over to a freaking out Anko and worried Naruto. You okay Celebi, asked Naruto. Bye bye bye. Why was that tiger chasing you anyway? Celebi came eye to eye with Shifter. Shifter looked at Naruto. Apparently it appeared right when the tiger was about to fall asleep, and angered it without meaning to. It was only supposed to come here to check on Neru, apparently. Neru? She's right here, said Naruto, pulling out the seal ball. Celebi looked at Neru carefully. Then at Naruto. Bye bye bye. Celebi says that you are almost ready to take the test that Arceus devised specifically for you. The next time the forest glows, be prepared to be sent into the past. There you must find and rescue an egg in order to begin the next stage of your journey, explained Shifter. Thanks for the heads up Celebi. Try to avoid the tigers from now on, said Naruto. Bye bye. Celebi flew off, and vanished into the time stream. Anko looked at Naruto in shock. So all this time it was Celebi I was hearing. Apparently. It is the guardian of the forests, so it makes sense. Right. I'm off to get drunk. Very, very drunk. Said Anko. So let me get this straight. Not only did you run into Celebi being chased by a tiger, but it informed you that whatever test the legendaries have made up for you is almost upon you and that in order to pass you have to rescue some random egg, said Tsunade. When this debriefing was over, she was so getting drunk. Naruto was a headache and a half and he wasn't even trying. Yeah. I don't know why they picked me, but I get the feeling if I do well then things are going to change around here. Like how, demanded Tsunade. Knowing my luck, we might be able to get machines and techniques that were lost in the cataclysm, like the ones used to heal Pokemon in a matter of hours instead of days, or maybe the one that brought fossils back to life, said Naruto shrugging. That caught Tsunade's attention. Having those machines would make things much easier. Part of the reason why only Shinobi had Pokemon was because of how expensive it was to heal their injuries. It took days for them to heal some of the worst ones, and that was with their best healers on the case. Well, when you do get sent back into the past, be sure to act like a Konoha Shinobi and don't embarrass us, said Tsunade finally. Hi, B.A.H.N., said Naruto grinning. Brat. Nero was practicing Shadow Ball under Shifter's guidance. Her illusions had come a long way thanks to Kurane, who was happy to have such an interesting student. And what a student Nero was. Like Naruto took to shadow clones, Nero had an instinctive knack towards genjutsu. The fact that genjutsu required less control to use compared to medical ninjutsu meant that Nero had more luck with the art compared to her trainer. In fact, Kurane would swear the two acted more like brother and sister than trainer and Pokemon. Finally Nero created a ball of pure darkness that destroyed a nearby tree. Shifter praised the fox Pokemon, who had been in Naruto's hench for the exercise. The better she got at pretending to be human, the less likely she would be taken and forced to breed by other shinobi. Something Naruto would never do. There were breeders out there that just stuck a ditto and whatever rare Pokemon they had managed to catch and sold the eggs. Anko might have been this type had it not been for the fact that if she hadn't had the Dratini she would have been ostracized as much as Naruto was until Shifter came along. As such she never forced her partner to breed. Tomorrow they were supposed to make an inspection of the trails that civilians were cleared to use through the forests. Which meant they had to cut training short. It was a C rank, but that was only because there was the very remote chance bandits may or may not show up during inspection. In which case they had to signal the nearest Umbu and hold the fort until they arrived to deal with the problem. There were very few missing nin who were stupid enough to attack Kanaha Shinobi on inspection duty less than 20 miles from the village itself. Those that were tended to be caught rather quickly by the hunter nin. For his team, Naruto was going to have Hinata and Shuji. Zabuza had asked to join any mission above sea that involved Naruto, since apparently he was bored out of his mind and he had heard about Naruto's odd brand of luck. Shifter, Neru. Dinner is ready, yelled Naruto. He had paused in his own training of chakra chains, which he had found his mother's scroll on, to make dinner for everyone. He was about halfway through the training, considering he had been spamming shadow clones, some of which trained with his team. 
Thankfully he had already stored his new jibble egg for later, along with the Grolithe egg he had gotten from the Inyazuka clan. The only reason he hadn't done so sooner was because no one told him you could store eggs in the server indefinitely and they wouldn't hatch until later, when you had the time and room on your team. He was the expert on Pokemon and pre-cataclysm events, yet he never knew this simple fact. It was just one of those things that was common knowledge and you either knew it already or heard about it by word of mouth. As such Tsunade had been the one to clue him in. Naruto was the type of person to keep an egg on him all the time and raise the Pokemon for a while simply because it was a newborn. Finding out you could store eggs had been a blessing for him. Which was why he had three eggs in the server, though he planned to take the Dratini with him. He had a feeling he would need it. Hey Hinata, you ready for the inspection, asked Naruto. She nodded, and double checked her seals on their food supply. It was a piece of advice Tsunade had given her, since living off the land wasn't a good idea. The monthly inspection was mostly newly minted chunins and the odd gen in checking the state of the road and removing the obstacles. Said obstacles occasionally included the odd bandit or thief, which wasn't exactly good for public relations if left unchecked. Hence why each member was given three flares that would alert nearby Umbu, who had to patrol the forest anyway. The only reason they weren't doing this detail was because they had long since petitioned the Hokage to make it a C rank to lighten their own workload, and because a good number saw the duty beneath them for some reason. Chuji raced up to join him. He had heard a rumor that if you went with Naruto on a C rank, you came home with more Pokemon on your team than you left with. This wasn't helped by listening to Ino talk about her trip to the newly named Spring Country. Or by talking to Haku. Or anyone who had been on a mission with Naruto really. Which was why he had volunteered to go with Naruto and Hinata, despite what his father had to say about the matter. Chouza didn't think Chuji would enjoy this mission, because it meant limited food was available and there was a small probability that his son might get hurt. However he didn't try to dissuade him because he knew it was Chuji's decision in the long run. His Laren, his Aaron had evolved since he got it, and was currently level 35, and Snorlax couldn't wait to have new friends on the team. Naruto planned to give the first Makahita he found to Chuji, because if there was ever a Pokemon that resembled the boy, that would be it. Seriously. Right. Now that we are ready, let's head out, said Naruto grinning. Is the boy ready, Celebi, asked Arceus. Indeed Lord Arceus. The child has raised the Zorua admirably, and they could very well save the second egg that we took back. In fact I would dare say that the child he rescued from the ruins could rival its mother, said Celebi. Arceus had chosen this particular Celebi because it had experience with Zorua and Zoruark personally, after they had helped save each other from a greedy human who was after future sight. Zoruark was narrowly saved by Celebi that day. Very well. When you take the boy and his companions, make sure that he remembers to ask for his father's other technique, which Jiraiya does not have. He must retrieve and return with the second egg if he expects to be taken back to the same time he was kidnapped from. Celebi and a few other legendary Pokemon chuckled. Arceus had a rather, odd, sense of humor. And since Articuno had left a rare ice type for the Hayaton child Haku, well, the legendaries were keeping a closer eye on Kanaha for the moment. To ensure that they didn't get lost, Dialga was going to help Celebi transport the children and their teams. Any Pokemon they caught in the past would be taken straight to their time if their team was full to avoid problems. Naruto's first clue that something was going to happen to him, again, was when he felt the hairs on the back of his neck go up. F asterisk CK. Hang on a second guys, I gotta send a message to the old lady, said Naruto. Hinata and Chuji stared at him in confusion as he had Shifter call down a flying type to tie a letter to the Hokage to. That was around the time the forest started to glow oddly, and they knew something was up. Naruto-kun, what's going on, asked Hinata. Celebi showed up a few weeks ago saying that Arceus had planned some sort of test for me and Neru. It also said the next time the forest started to glow that I would have to retrieve an egg and return to Kanaha for me to come back home. I think they're starting the test now. What do we do? asked Chuji nervously. Relax guys. I seriously doubt that they plan to drop us somewhere dangerous, and if my guess is right we just need to head to Whirlpool and come back. Bye bye bye, came the cry and Hinata was resisting the urge to coo at the sight of the fairy-like Pokemon. Naruto looked at the green fairy, and said, The test is starting, isn't it? Bye. Naruto sighed. He could only hope Tsunade didn't gut him when they returned. With a glow of energy that surrounded the three teens, 
They vanished right as the Ambu appeared to confirm the odd note Naruto sent ahead. Well that and to investigate the glowing forest which was decidedly not normal. The first thing Naruto noted was that the area had seen better days. The second thing he noticed was that the village in the distance, they had barely gone far enough to see the Hokage mountain in the distance, had only three heads instead of the four they were used to. But the third and final thing they noticed, and this was the biggest problem Naruto saw, was that there were dead IWA ninja all around them. Naruto put two and two together to get four, and cursed. Celebi had to drop us in the middle of the damn third shinobi war. What, said the two. The only time there were ever dead IWA shinobi this close to the village with the three hokages in the mountain was the third shinobi war. And the only reason that I even know that much is because I happen to be a huge fan of the fourth. We need to find the date. Hinata and Chuji nodded in agreement. Naruto would never let anything happen to them. Naruto quickly hung into a random shinobi with no distinguishing characteristics, and approached one of the chunin. Since he had a real Kanaha flak jacket and he tie ate, the man didn't think twice about answering him. The fact Naruto had practically memorized names and dates of the third war because it was the one that Minato Namikaze had become famous in didn't hurt either. Once he knew what day it was, he quickly returned to his team. Good news, it's the end of the third war, and team Minato was just deployed to destroy the bridge. Bad news, it's right on our way to Whirlpool, said Naruto. Why do we have to head to Whirlpool anyway, asked Chuji. Long story short, there were two Zorua eggs being studied in Whirlpool before it was destroyed. One I found and hatched. The other was taken back by the legendary Pokemon, right before the third war's conclusion. If we're in the ending of the war, then the only thing I can think of that would possibly be considered a test is to retrieve the second egg and return back to Kanaha where Celebi will take us home. Which way is Whirlpool, asked Chuji. Naruto pointed. With a small burst of chakra, the trio headed towards Whirlpool, unaware of what their actions on the way back would result in the changing of history. Getting to Whirlpool, as it turned out, was much easier than expected. Mostly because it had been destroyed only a few days ago, which meant that no one wanted to go there anyway. Which meant there would be much looting in the name of saving some history. Or in Hinata's case, stumbling across an old seal book that happened to have the counter for the caged bird someone had left behind. This would later result in the short, but nonetheless memorable civil war of the Hyuga clan, that would end in the deaths of several clan elders who weren't well liked that much anyway. Naruto found the Zorua egg rather easily, since Nero could sense its presence. They had to dig through three tons of rubble, in which Chuji became invaluable because of his partial expansion jutsu, that boy was a serious powerhouse, to get to it, but eventually they did. It was a blue and black egg, unlike the red and black one that Nero came from. Instead of claiming the egg for himself, Naruto handed it to Hinata. Having a genjutsu type like Zorua on her team would only add to its effectiveness in the long run. While they were searching, Naruto found a young Makahita and had Chuji catch it. It was on the way back that things grew complicated. They were about to the bridge which would be destroyed by tomorrow, Naruto had those kind of facts firmly rooted in his head, when he heard something. He raised a hand, singling that they stop. Hinata and Chuji paused immediately. They were in the middle of a war zone where being a Kanaha Nin was almost certain to get you killed if an IWA ninja saw you. The only good thing was that it would take IWA a few seconds to recognize the leaf symbol, which was more than enough time for Nero to cast a simple genjutsu to disguise the leaf on their headbands. They were ninja. Ninja were supposed to be sneaky and tricksters. Which was why if they were caught by the wrong side, Naruto was going to do the talking and hopefully bullshit their way out of trouble. Naruto heard a girl scream and then silence. Then the sound of arguing was heard. They went in closer and found an Uchiha and, was that Kakashi? Naruto took a closer look and confirmed that it was Kakashi Heitake, known pervert, and lazy dog. He went over the date in his head and realized what was going on. One of the mission reports he had read was a declassified one about the destruction of the bridge right after the battle in which Namikaze earned the moniker Yellow Flash. During that almost failed mission, one of Team Minato was killed in a rock slide, and Kakashi spent a few months off missions recovering. If his teammate was the Uchiha, then his eye must have come from him. Naruto used the Umbu signals to tell his team what he planned to do. This Uchiha was one of theirs, and he wasn't going to let the kid die if he could help it. Both Hinata and Naruto were medic trained by Tsunade herself, and Chuji was crazy strong. They just had to let events play themselves out until Kakashi and the girl left, and then rescue their fellow Leaf Nin. 
With the injuries he was going to sustain, it was unlikely the kid would fight them over it. Chuji looked a little green as the Kunoichi removed the Uchiha's Sherinan and replaced Kakashi's ruined eye with it. Thankfully he didn't blow chunks. Hinata and Naruto had developed a tolerance to the messy applications of medical jutsu, which was why they weren't freaking out. This Rin girl was quite good. A bit weak, but she was decent at what she could do. Kakashi and Rin left the area, albeit very reluctantly. Once they were a few miles away according to Hinata, Naruto had Chuji remove the boulders. The damage was severe, but it wasn't fatal if treated properly. Though this was one of those times that Naruto was very, very glad he kept a fully stocked extreme breeder's kit. Otherwise the Uchiha kid would have died. Hinata ensured the boy stayed out cold, because if he struggled he could very well kill himself on accident. Once Naruto was sure the Uchiha would survive being moved, he had two clones carry him away. He had no idea that Minato would arrive an hour later to say goodbye to his student, only to discover the body missing and signs of medical treatment. Or that he would come face to face with his own son.